Okay, that brings us to Pathfinder uh, Wednesday and session 49. Making sure I actually have um, mics working, which is always good to check considering how often I forget to check those things. Uh, and we seem to have cameras working too, which is good. That doesn't always happen. So, today at the table we have a sole person of Mark. Yeah, I'm playing Sparky, there's no friends because no one's at the table. Ah uh, no, I'm playing Sparky the Dwarf Rogue, who is learning about previous Rogue of the Party is a bit of a nuisance to the party, and is trying to redeem the word of Rogues through the party. So. Worst things could happen. Hmm? Uh, online today we have uh, David. Ah, hello. <coughs> I'm David, I play Bella Silvertongue, a uh, human sorcerer-ish. Um, who is doing his best to bring shame to the name of sorcerers all across the land. I'm sure you've still got far more to go on that one. Uh, plenty more to go. Definitely doesn't sacrifice people to um, feed uh, Eldritch sea creatures. Why not? I'm sure there's um, many bonuses in there for sorcerers. Yeah, no, that doesn't sound like something I do. Uh, also online, we have Jeremy. Good evening, all. Yes, I'm playing Korda, the elven half-human warrior from Sandpoint, and would-be hero and all-round good guy that just wants to help the world. Very good day. Yeah. Also online, we have Victor. Mm. Hello. <laughs> I'm Victor, I'm from Brazil, and I play Luna of Libra, a uh, human sha anti oracle of uh, oracle of the cosmos. She has a very curious personality, and she is a pathfinder right now, running with you guys. And we have a new character tonight uh, with another Martin. Another oh. Martin. Who's the other Martin? Well, well I, you are. Yeah, I'm one. <laughs> Two Martins better than one Martin. Um, so, yes, I'm playing Barak Blood Guzzler, the uh, wild dr dwarf um, druid. Oh, another wild druid. Oh. I heard that the previous druid was um, a bit of a train wreck, but. Who knows? You don't have a companion that's playable there. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't have a companion as well. Oh. Well, that's good. Or any companion, rather. Ah, uh, good. <clears throat> I, I think and this one was warned. Not everyone you meet is assumed to have red eyes. <laughs> no, no, he doesn't have a vampire face no, uh, either. No paranoia towards vampires at all, do you? No. Oh, that's good. He might actually turn out to be a decent druid. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, the has already started. Trust me, come on. <laughs> well, they want to get it in while they remember. That's good. No, I have no problem. Okay, so with the story so far, uh, you successfully managed to retrieve the second shard of Sien in Magnamar and return it to Lady Hindmarsh. Uh, and she is currently um, studying it safely. Uh, uh, after seeing um, what Balaf did to the last one. Good yeah, you nerds didn't even take it within yourself, nerds. <laughs> well, it, it well, Luna almost, almost touched it. <laughs> sure. I, I'm sure you'd love to be the pinnacle of gluttony right now. A pinnacle of what? Gluttony. Gluttony, okay. I greed. Well... Actually, Kerber was pretty interested in Raph. Oh, no, this would, this would have been Luna being that, so... Yeah, yeah. Well, Pimwinkle would love it, personally, but that's, that's another thing. So. There, there are completely... Uh, each no, of the sins are rather um, important. <laughs> yeah. So, what's uh, happened since then is you are asked to return to Corvosa and check in and see how things are progressing there now that you've been away for a little while and seeing what's happening. Uh, as there are a few bad things happening, you returned and met with um, uh, some 
members of the society, including Balas' father, as well as one of Balas' old friends. Sorry, I was just getting on the information. All good. And um, uh, Cordar went and spoke with Presenter Croft, who gave you the same information. They're asking you to check in on uh, goings on that are happening uh, with a name, a guy named Devane Dios Amperio, uh, who's trying to destabilize the city in the name of Chaliax. Well, uh, that, that, that three names are for only one guy? Yeah. Okay. Devane Dios Ampri. I got so wrong on that last week. Just yeah, sounds like three names. <laughs> I'm going to call it Dav. And it's yeah. yeah. from my ears. I'm going with Dav because it's. Uh, he's an ambassador, so he always pronounces his full name when people talk to him. Yeah. Um, yep. Because he, he likes to um, make everyone be very full. Mm -hmm. He is an ambassador for a nation. For Chaliax. And Chaliax is a lot bigger than Corvosa, and Corvosa is considered one of the children uh, nations of Chaliax. And he's apparently got a plot to buy up big chunks of the city with destabilizing the city first. So you're being asked to go to Eel's End and see if you can uh, find out what his vices are. Uh, uh, the, was the implication that his attempts to destabilize the city have been one of the factors in all the... Uh, unrest and etc. in the city. Yes, that it was is, using, um, it was encouraging um, the Temple of Lust memory, and um, also there was a the Ill's End is where the King of Spiders is. Is that right? Uh, Ill's End, where it is the um, uh, dealing with the King of Spiders. Mm. What? Well, that's just the name that the. Uh, of the like the the, the vice den, like the the drug den, etc. that called the Eel King is run by is a Vargo or something who's yeah, not the, 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 the Vargo Bravisi is his uh, lesser known name, but he's known as the King of Spiders throughout the city. Yeah, this is like like a like a Master of Whisper title, something like that, right? Um. You, you didn't grow up in the city, so uh, you can believe exactly what you like. Though those that did come from the city would probably say, um, uh, no, no, he has real spiders. Oh, okay. So if he's down, yeah, assume there are spiders. Yeah, this is, this is a fantasy world, Peter. What do you think about You're thinking. <laughs> um, so and you've been given a thousand um, gold to bribe him. And um, uh, basically, oh. uh, to get whatever you can on um, uh, Devane yourself. What is it, what is David? Okay, so it's not so much the, the guy. It's not oh, so much the connection between the King of Spiders and Dalvin, but the but the King of Spiders might have information that would be useful. Against Darvain, is that the thought? Yeah, well, Darvain uh, gambles a lot at um, his place. Ah, okay, right. So he's, he's a regular there, and so therefore he's thinking, hey, he might have some uh, connections and or dirt. Though it, it is also added that um, the Davano, Davago is dangerous, so if things get violent, Cressenda will not be disappointed if uh, he stops being a nuisance to the city. Oh, okay. Oh, this seems like a job for David. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's bribe, the... bribe being talking and killing. Oh, yeah. Right. So, right. So, so, from Christina's <laughs> perspective, uh, he's uh, a criminal that she'd deal with if she could, but she, so therefore she's happy if we deal with it for her. Is that right? Uh, yes, um, but. Killing is a last resort, but if it's a resort you have to take, she's not going to mourn him. Right, okay. Uh, which means are, you, are you here at this, David? So ha having someone who is bribable is better than having someone who's not bribable. Hmm. 
Okay. So you might be able to get David, further. This sounds, like, this, this sounds like a Christmas present, David. No. I, I, I yeah, got David's on mute at the moment. So I've got an idea. I've got a druid. You can wild check into a spider. I, I, I want to hear spider. what he has to say, man, about these things. And when you uh, arrive back at the um, Nexus uh, home, not her um, family home, but her home home. She's very uncranky at the moment, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you see a you see a, a new dwarf has uh, also arrived, who you recognise from uh, being a year behind, uh, also in training. Right. So I've gone off and been trained. Yep. So basically, you you trained after you're already um, third level. Right. These guys and trained uh, before they were first level. Right. But because we're a bit uncomfortable being in a city. I, I, from, as a dwarf, I think, Martin, we don't like these people in the city at all because we, we do trade with them, but we find them very arrogant. That's probably the best word for it. So, I just don't like anyone in the city. Yeah, that's right. Maybe dwarves are okay, but I, I prefer you out in the wilderness. Okay. Uh, are, are, we, are we on Corvosa? We are in Corvosa at the moment. You are, you are in Corvosa, and you are at... Um, uh, Nexus friend's house who she inherited upon her death. The, um, Suisei... Nexus have, um, Nexus have, like, houses everywhere. Uh, Nexus has only one house. The other house is the okay. Temple, okay? So there is now a, um, <laughs> Temple of Lust where Nexus' parents' house stood. And the, the Nexus house, what we call it Nexus house now, is actually the, the, the old house of... Uh, what was her name? The um, Zalara. Zalara, yeah, that's right, yeah. Who we came to help and thought he did. Because she still likes to help after death. If, if I'm walking back with Nick, though, would I recognise this dwarf from Pathfinder things? Okay, so did, uh, have Luna you and, like, did Luna and Sparky end up spending more time in Axelon with uh, Balak, or...? Uh, yes, you have spent time with Cordo him in the past. Balak? Well, with, with him in the, you have spent time with him in the past, yes. Oh, okay, so there's a bit of a bond there. Yeah. Just so you're not always sure who gets assigned where because everything's um, as uh, needed or an emergency feeling. Well, I mean, obviously it is an emergency because I'm in the city. <laughs> um, if, I, if, I, like, if I'm walking back and I see... I've got your cartoon character's name again, Martin. Just bear with me. Barak. 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 If I see Barak at the front. Mm. I see another dwarf. I'm running up and go for a hug because <laughs> I'm, um, hanging, I'm hanging around with like humans you know um, yeah humans half elves dodgy characters and it's good to see another dwarf yeah. I, I, I'll give you a hug yeah. Yeah. Just to hey I'll you arrived good to see you here yes uh, this this tall a half orc barbarian is called Nexo um, he's doesn't talk much but actions do better than words so just don't get on, on his bad side. Right. Okay. Uh, P.S. He's in a cranky mood right now, so just give him a bit of space. <laughs> yeah, P.S. Every side bad at the moment. <laughs> and uh, which character was that? Oh, uh, that's uh, Annie's that, character. That was Annie, who's not here right now. Yeah. Ah, okay. uh, right. Yeah. She's got a huge, yeah. like, two-handed axe that looks like it can slice people's heads off in one string. So. But it has in the past. It has, by the way, yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, the rest of the people are coming still, so if you just want to sit down, this is the place we're staying at. This is kind of our house refuge, I've been told. Um, Nexa owns it, so be nice. Don't break anything. Yeah. And, and it looks, it looks no. like it, go, it looks a bit dis oh, does it look disheveled, or did we clear it up the last time? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, it's just a li little simple house with a couple of rooms and a little small kitchen, I think. So, so. Yeah. Alright, as long as I can kind of see the sky, that sounds good. Oh, there's a good garden at the back. Mm. Oh, nice. There, there are some areas that seem to have um, the smell of bleach. Maybe I'll avoid those. Just on uh, general principles. Typical time, I can't remember now. I can. I can. I don't know. That's my previous character that went to an NPC. <laughs> Anyway, so I'll, we'll wait for um, 
all the other party um, we've got a a human cord that, though in, in the area that smells of bleach you do see um, uh, writing a scroll on the wall Pimwinkle is here is the half orc a barbarian yep. yes just a red Um and yeah um don't mean and I, 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 I'll take you aside there and, and I'll say look that name on the thing don't mention it out loud in front of Nexa because he gets very very upset and starts swinging okay, <laughs> okay. this was um, and I'd explain the kind of this was the previous rogue they had we're in a bit paywall um, I don't know the full details yet still but what I heard uh -huh. that let's just say he got kicked out of the Pathfinder Society and he's doing some crazy shit so and he had a six run through this house. Uh, do I know that? He was? Ne Nexa would have said so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and he also... Um, Which is where are the bleachers? <laughs> yeah, he kind of can't control himself. Is it? And I, I, it's, it's hard to explain. Just He's a deviant. It's probably the best word for it. So. Right. For, for you, Martin, that's my previous character. That went a bit crazy. So. Oh, so you kind of had a reset. Well, let's just say that it's, uh, it's when, when you're at the table one day, I'll explain all, and you're just going, what the hell? I think, so. okay. yeah. or, or you can watch back the uh, 48 previous episodes and going, what the, nearly every episode. Yeah, my all character right. went from a nice, innocent halfling to cray cray. So. And, and reset to the word, because last time we saw Pinwinkle, we tried very hard to kill him. Well, he did come out of his own dead body as another penguin call. That's right. Yeah. Well, I worry about uh, meeting uh, Kanga again. Well, that, we'll have to see what happens on that one, I think, Victor. So. There is story there already. I know, Martin's already decided what's going on with it, I believe. So. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, I, I worked out as soon as you start playing him. My survival. So, NPCs are, uh, PCs aren't necessarily killed off. They generally um, become NPCs and uh, come back to the story, uh, continuing on with what they were doing when they left play. As players are meant to be, play characters are meant to be good, not evil. Evil characters tend tend to go NPCs and become your foes. So, uh, as you're sitting there and uh, resting, when David's um, back online, his character will rock up. Uh, until then, uh, Jeremy can outline the rest of you what uh, he thinks you should be doing <laughs> as he, he returns back. Well, one of the uh, bits of news that uh, uh, Jeremy gets is uh, the uh, person, the, the guardsman you beheaded, has uh, been granted a reincarnation okay. by the um, Temple of Phrasma. Yeah, that was uh, Dan Casca or something. Yep, that fine. was that. Yep. Mm. So, does the rumor have any explanations to why he got returned? Uh, the the fact that he got granted a uh, reincarnation is not a small thing. It meant no. that under the eyes of Charisma, he hasn't finished his work yet. And he was okay. So, so it wasn't necessarily a approved by the well, the queen now, isn't it? It's not the king yeah. <laughs> or Cusido, Is that right? It was. It may have been done. By, it may have been done by Cressida. Right. Who who actually right. did it is unknown. Every every like city, uh, big city on on the. On uh, Golarion have a king, right? No. Or, or just like the rain, uh, uh, like the place? Uh, so, Cor Corvosa has royalty. Uh, Magnema has uh, Council of Lords. Uh, Riddleport has a um, uh, pirate uh, overlord. So, not, not, not actually kings. Okay. Um, well, uh, Corvosa did have a king until recently, or is it, do, do we still have a king? Uh, it, it's hard to tell, everyone's sort of um, uh, asking if he's actually dead or not, 
because it, it's all rumours right now because it's believed he's died. Okay, he just hasn't been seen in a long time at this stage. So yeah, right? la last time he was seen, he looked a bit ill. Right. Um, okay, so, well, I'll, I'll assume that I dropped the rumour about Van Kastikin after I spoke to Fafida, because otherwise I would have actually asked her about um, what happened there. But, so you're not Christina. Sorry. No, no, no. Christina is the. I kind of want to try to list, but like head of the guard in Corvosa, like ah, okay. chief policeman type person. And so, what's your name, Jeremy? I'm Corda. Corda, of course. What are the good? Corda, the good. Okay. <laughs> just to to help you with that, you can actually see the names on the um, uh, shared screen. Oh yeah! Oh my God! I, you you know I never ever <laughs> notice it that that our name is like uh, at the top as a VC and our character name is uh, are at the bottom in the in the in the character tokens uh, there on the I never ever saw that before, man. I am totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> There's also the uh, the list that's just beside, the, like it comes in between the photo, the, the, the images. There's a list of the, the people who play this person so on Skype or MVC. I am so fucking dumb, man. Don't worry, <laughs> There's it, it's only the 49th session I've been doing it that way. Yeah, I am struggling for like two years to learn all of your names, man. Come on. <laughs> two years. And they're all there for you. Actually, three years. <laughs> I replied and messaged her what I thought about you, Victor, just then, so I just thought I'd I'm sorry, guys. It's okay. I'm okay. so bad right now. Cordar returns then and uh, explains for a character. Since we come here to find out what's going on in the city and, and how things have changed. Okay, Cordar had gone to Corsida and who we'd done work for before, which is why he had that contact. Um, and she told the story about the fact that, yeah, uh, she wants us as people who are not known to be working with the guard as such <laughs> can then get into this den of iniquity. Apparently, we're not necessarily supposed to kill everyone indiscriminately there because they're not all bad or badly. <laughs> <laughs> but if some die, particularly uh, Devago, then that's not the end of the world. Well, she did ask. Uh, she no, uh, Devago is the king of spiders. He is yeah. the person who runs the vice den. But she specifically so stated for you not to kill. Devane, Gios, Ampere, because you'll make a martyr out of him if you do. Yeah. But yeah, but before Devago dies, if he does, the important thing is to get the information out of him. So. Um, uh, do we know where this uh, eel's end is? Uh, Nexa does, um, and is currently, um, uh, uh, swearing, um, uh, using swear words followed by Pinwinkle, uh, consistently. Thanks. While, while hitting a wall. Is the wall with a pitch, the, the word Pinwinkle? Yep. Um, I hey. suggest to Corda to leave her alone for five minutes. Well, he, he, he is, is there? Uh, uh, his name's written where he had, uh, christened the room. He left his mark. Oh, the room. Oh, that room. I remember now. <laughs> Corda will at least go into the room where Nexo is. Yeah. No kids parties warning. Um, and uh, we'll offer to help with the cleaning. Uh, uh, you can see that Nexo is trying to remove uh, everything that Pimwinkle wrote with um, his fists. Using the great axe. No, not the great axe, just the fist. Just the fist? Okay. Well, it hurts more that way. Okay. In, in which case, 
Cornard assistance with the cleaning will be trying to remove or uh, take aside some of the more valuable or irreplaceable items <laughs> that Nick uh, might be concerned about afterwards. <laughs> That's fair. So do we have a David back or have we uh, lost him for the moment? Oh, I can pay over his character if he wants me to. Seems to have dropped out, so I'll see if I can bring him back in. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah, he may have been busy going off having a shower, so that would be a very, rather um, unfortunate um, uh, bring in. But, besides that... Uh, oh man, this is our last campaign. This is the day for him. Where is him? He is kind He represents us right now. And you do get from um, Nexa that uh, Nexa wants nothing to do with uh, um, uh, the uh, King of Spiders again. Again? Uh, Corda will aim to politely ask if she has more information or knowledge about him that might be useful in discussions. At this stage, I'm going to add that Nexa has a phobia of spiders. Okay. I didn't know that. It uh, does now. Oh, that's <laughs> At least for the time being, she does. <laughs> well. So, yeah, so her response or information about the King of Spiders is uh, not so much from first hand knowledge, apparently, just the avoidance of the location. Is that right? Uh, no, actually, first hand knowledge. Okay. And that's, uh, and that's the person who gave her a phobia of spiders. Right, okay. Does she give any information then about this guy saying, yeah, I'm not going to review it, but this is what you want to know? Uh, you should kill him? Yeah, it's her response. His response. Okay. That's not actually out of the, off the agenda by any stretch from Cordyce's perspective. It sounds like a bad man. Basically, don't let him talk, kill him at first opportunity, and then break his bones and uh, crunch him to paste, and then turn him into chum for the waters. Okay, and you don't wish to come along to be to partake in this activity. And uh, one of the few times you see uh, Nexa shiver at the thought. No. <laughs> By the sound of it, it's probably a good thing she's not going to come because she might be a bit hard on that diplomacy stage first up. <laughs> Was that you back, David? I believe we have a David back. Yeah, I was talking to him over a French book, like, Get in here, man! <laughs> <laughs> Is this Bell Ups time? Um, hmm. What makes it Bell Ups time? Uh, it's his city. Oh, man, you did it, did you did it. Oh, okay. So, so, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Because, because I've been trying to message you, please don't tell me what to do while I'm at work, especially while I'm having issues with my phone and doing other things as well. I really don't need a reminder of what I need to be doing. Alright? Oh man, I'm sorry man, I don't want it to be rude or anything, come on. I was just like, happy and excited. Yeah, no, I appreciate that, but I also don't need 30 messages telling me to come back to do the thing that I'm trying to do. Sorry guys, I don't mean to be rude, I don't mean to be uh, uh, irritated, but I just we have some other things that are a little bit more important while, like, while I'm trying to do things. That's cool man. All good. All good. Are you still busy with stuff? Yeah, probably yes. Yeah, you okay. Well, he's well, still busy with that, stuff. Um, that was my bad, guys. Sorry. Yeah. All good. Okay, so uh, you have a little bit of time to uh, introduce yourselves to uh, your new um, dwarf and say what you've been up to. Yes. So has he come directly from Absalom? Yes, he, he got off the pier um, this very day. Oh, okay, so he travelled by boat to get here, he didn't get sent here via circ wound circle or anything like that? Yeah, he got, he got sent here by boat. Okay, cool. So. And I'm guessing that would have been more fun for him. <laughs> wow, the wow. travel's like all good. <laughs> Hey, tra travelling on the um, ocean is, the, uh, is so much better than being in the city. 
Yeah, but he travels. The travel takes so long. That's that's how poor you. Yeah. yeah uh, so we 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 all like uh, heard that he was coming, and we waited for him, right? I <laughs> know. Uh, like oh my dragon friend! I turned into a flying snake and flew. Uh, Wrong week. Do that, but only for a short time. <laughs> that was D and D week. Yeah, I'll, I, no one else is going to introduce, I'll go first. Well, oh, I didn't like the reference, that's because... Yeah, no, don't, don't question it, it really doesn't matter whether it's true or not. Yeah. Anyway, so, um, I'll, um, I know Barrett because I'm a dwarf and I've known him from, the, from um, Danglehoff where we met each other originally, so, um, you, you probably know me as Sparky from, Sparky Amber Spark from the Amber Spark bat family back in our dwarven town, so, um, I'm the, I think the middle child. Uh, I'm okay. the youngest of all my family, of all males but me. It's so, okay if you don't actually remember her. We all try not to remember her half the time. All right. That's it. Um, um, and I just say, he's, just, a, he's the dick of the party. I so, yeah, yeah. um, <laughs> remember you. <laughs> of course I remember you. Um, and I'll, I'll just go around and go, that's Belaf. He comes from this town. He, he burns things. I do. There's Cordar. Well, my beautiful one. Cordar, he's at the front. Take, um, Hitting things with um, that that um, that big half orc person, and that's Luna. Um, she's got a problem with her hand at the moment, but Luna's a pretty nice person. So, uh, so that's the party. Um, yeah, we're here just to um, check up in the town for the Pathfinder Society. Connor, if I ever need a spire or, or someone to announce me, please don't be smart. Oh, uh, yeah. It's worse than this town. Isn't it? Wasn't this not, not bad in the other town? Yeah. He, he gets into his hometown, he gets all near Naki Naki Naki. So, anyway. Um, anyway, um, we've got to go to. Don't uh, bother, Sparky. You are great. I'm Sparky. No, she's great. It's all good. So, anyway, I'm, just, I'm waiting for. Um, do you want to head off to this thing, Porter? Okay, what time of day is it? Okay, so it is getting on mid-afternoon evening. Uh, uh, Balaf does know that Ill's end really picks up um, uh, at dusk, where most of the stuff opens up because it's one of those night establishments more than day establishments. That's because the, uh, during the sundown is when all the magic happens. And the real and the horror magic. But does that mean then that uh, you recommend we try and talk to this Devago in the evening, or is it better to try and catch him during the day when he may be less busy? You know, I would say that he might find himself a little bit distracted at this time of day. Maybe he might be preparing to be distracted. Is that like a help negotiation? I very much doubt. <laughs> so what was uh, so happened, David, is that this mission is like a bribe or a keto mission. Yeah, I'm aware. Uh, yeah, I also, the character doesn't care. Uh, the character's just going to do what he does. Okay. Yeah, and he also has much less interest in all of this now. Why if Bella get a discount? Like, uh, did it need to grab the guy? Do we keep the, the, the one K or do we need to give it back to the guild? <laughs> That's a, a card, a, 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 a player question, not a card question. <laughs> well, the, the player will have to find out from the characters. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, Luke is not that great. Well, just for you. Um, so another thing that Balath can tell you is that Il's End is named after the warship known as Il's End that forms the uh, center of a group of connected ships uh, stuck at the end of a pier. And they've been there, uh, a fixture there so long that they're basically uh, um, not going to move. Um, is it worth potentially 
uh, visiting the place during its busy time to at least get an idea of the lay of the land? Uh, you... maybe... Oh, oh I, have, I have no objections to visiting during its busy time. Normally, um, if it's not uh, open at night, the pier is closed off. So unless you've got official business, um, uh, as in bringing um, supplies, uh, which normally come by boat, you wouldn't be able to get uh, onto the actual uh, group of ships itself. There are five ships involved. Okay. So, yeah, so it's potentially, uh, it's probably worth going and visiting now. Um, uh, based on the style of establishment, um, it's appropriate to go armed and armed, maybe? As long as you're um, able to swim in it, sure. Yes, I, I wouldn't get too carried away, but um, I think it would be a very, very silly man who walks, or other, who walks into this area armed. I'm well, well, if I were a king, uh, I should probably like, take a bath on it, but I'm not then. Okay, so Cordo so will leave his half plate behind, but he will go in his leather armor with his uh, sword, shield, etc. Mm -hmm. And whip. Oh, and whip. We can come in there. Cordo is going to ask Bella okay, so if we head over towards them uh, all the before we leave. Um, as the resident expert on the, uh, the lower realms, I understand, the lower realms. I understand that the uh, deal that I made with our, uh, the entity we met underneath Magnamar was my life or our lives for my steel. Yes. Where does the whip fit in? I think you all think they might provide something extra? No, not all at all, but I think you may have helped them to get us up here and do something that they need to do. Perhaps even just escape from the situation that he was in. Okay, for, for David, I'll give you a little bit of extra for that as well with your dealings. Um, you may yeah. think the pit fiend is actually in, in insulting Jeremy's character by saying he overpaid for the steal for the lives of your fellows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so, 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 so the whip would have been a, um, he, he's, he's balancing the, um, payment. <laughs> yeah, no, he's a change. Um, I dare say that he probably could have escaped from where he was, um, without, without making some form of deal, or at least he didn't want to go back into hand. So, I dare say he may have been thanking you. Mm. Marvellous. But that said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't avoid using that whip. It's probably an incredible enough. It's a bit enough. Even the leanings of pit feeds are the stuff of greatness. Well, apparently it had a particular effect to give us those from the lower well, which is the only reason I'm carrying it. Well, you saw what he did to the other then. I helped him out. Marvellous. How did he help to escape the mortal realm? Um. Uh, for your character, David, uh, Sparky looks at you with a smirk. I understand your blue shit out your ass. So. Sorry? I rolled a 28 on perception, and I realise you're not telling the full truth. So. Are you sure about that? 28. Let me just get my dice. Okay, <laughs> you be 28 then, okay? He's got pretty good shit down to be 28. Don't, don't get it, this is the old man. So passively you would beat it. If he rolls, probably not. Mm -hmm. That's pretty high. Is it? Oh, it is. Oh, sorry, Mark. I've got I've got some bad news for you, buddy. Yeah. What do you? Get? Yeah, no, nah, I that's dirty. <laughs> so yes, um, as, as far as you know, um, he, he, he's not left anything out. Oh, damn it! I thought I got him. Damn it. That was a pretty high roll for me. Uh, it was very impressive, and I must admit, it took me. A very high number on the dice to beat you, but I got, uh, yeah, I got 90 yeah. so on dice, so yeah, I was like, well, oh. you can be confident 
not only did Cordard not roll a 20 to try and see through it, he actually rolled a 1, so he's very believing of it. <laughs> no, <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe he's thinking maybe it's one of the few times Bella's mouth moved, work came out, and he wasn't playing. <laughs> and it made sense at the same look, time. In this, case, in, agreement. in this case, just to give you an insight into Bella's motivation, he's just trying to protect you from the insult. But if he be- if he actually believed that the weapon was moderately dangerous, uh, he would probably tell you. Uh, exactly. That's all good. That's fine. Uh, Cordage happy to accept everything you told him about the demon system, so that's good. Yeah, nice one. And as I said, he's disturbed and disappointed at the thought that he helped something from another world. <laughs> okay. After a, a couple of uh, uh, hours' walk, you make yourself um, into Old Corvosa. Uh, a, a place that um, Balath uh, has rarely travelled because it, it is really one of the murkier areas of the city. Wouldn't that be his forte? <laughs> you would, you would no, think so. No, actually. Very much not. Uh, you, so, Marty, you, do, do we have a map for Corvosa or something like that uh, that, that you can show us like, on, the, on the camera? Know. Uh, if it's not Mac, just so you know, uh, just just as a just as player information, Balath is actually technically nobility, uh, or at least the son of nobility. Um, and so, you know, while he is from the most debaucherous and superior nation, um, he doesn't really tend to associate with the common folk. They're far beneath him. Okay, that's on your side. Oh, he, he might have gone right slumming right. occasionally, but. He's got better places to slum rather than the... the, the Only in classier, classy joints. Okay, so yeah, um, no, if you can see the um, finger on the map, um, uh, where you're staying at the moment is in Midland. Uh, that's yeah. where um, you know that um, uh, Nexa's main place is. Her uh, old house was, cl- was along this avenue here that goes straight up to the castle. So it is something that everyone um, will see. And you're heading out to what's called the Old Dock area of Old Corvosa. And uh, this is the dodgiest part of the city as far as Balath is concerned. It's basically um, uh, always watch your back and uh, don't go there alone sort of place. Yeah. And with with that in mind... No, yeah, knowing that, yes, Corner yes, he left his half plate behind and he left his grand sewer behind, but basically he's got yeah. everything else. <laughs> and here's the Amnios music. There's a city music. Well, this yeah, is. Bella. Um, Sorry. This music is the Welcome to Ill's End, if you can actually hear anything in the background. Yeah, I actually can't hear it, I guess. That's okay. When the music's too loud, you can barely hear anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially no. overside. So we're not literally going underwater. No, you're going no. out on a just pier. The, just the underworld. The underworld and the underworld. Okay. So, uh, as you um, reach the pier, you, you hear the sound of the carousing uh, booming from the ele- elegantly painted barges moored on this long pier. Large signs painted in several languages are now to pilings and hang from ropes slung between the barges. The closest barge to the east bears a sign that says, The Twin Tigers. Take the tiger by the tail and try your luck. Opposite that to the west, a boat sign says, Welcome to the Golden Hawk. No stay safer in Old Corvosa. Further to the south is Dragon's Breath Corridor. Dream the Dragon's Dream at affordable prices. Well, opposite that is the House of Clouds. The caress of our lovelies will take you straight to heaven. Only wow. the largest vessel, an old warship to the south, bears no sign at all. Short rope bridges... Uh, and gangplanks provide access to all the decks of those ships from the pier and from the decks of the other ships. So, 
so we are more close to the Jagged River part. Uh, this west, west part. You are basically, if you can see the map, and I've got the um, finger, you're basically probably um, somewhere over here. And you see that there are a dozen people standing um, guard at the pier. Each of them uh, with the sign of the spider on their chest. Oh, this is like a gang thing. Okay. All, all the guards. So the guards are like the little spiders. Uh, the, the, so so think Spider Man sort of spider on their chest. Not a small spider. Wait, a real spider? A real spider, not a tattoo spider. No, a, a depiction of a spider on their clothing. Oh. It's just a cloud. Yeah, those are noobs. They they are not show anti. Mm. <laughs> they are Chalaxian still. Um, yeah, those are noobs. And can we see the young people around anything? Uh, you do see mm -hmm. a, and hear others on the ships, but most people um, walk brisk, briskly onto a ship. Uh, you see a, a couple of people walking past, but not many people just standing around talking. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's sort of an actually coming up and probably slow down a bit so I can be relaxing it without actually stopping, but apparently he's a really good move. Um, and yeah, so people are going past those guys with the spiders onto the pier, onto the ships, is that right? Uh, yeah, though they are being, um, uh, they, they generally pay a uh, couple of coppers to go past. So where are we at? Is there? So that, we've got pier in front of us, ships all around the pier. Mm -hmm. and, and before you get to the ships, there are the guards um, uh, who have a, a, some sort of um, uh, stand with them. Stand. Stand. So sort of where they're, where they're basically taking uh, entry fees. Okay. Um, I'm going to... Can I step back from the party a bit? You can. I want to get in the space. You can I'm step so far back you can swim. I want to get back straight into a kind of a. Why so you by yourself? By myself in a, sh in a, in a shadowy place. Kind of. Okay, um, you'll you you have to go back about three hundred feet oh, because it's a, it's one of the longer piers, really and uh, okay. they've set it back far enough that they can see people coming. Okay, well, I can't do that. Can you can get in his way. It doesn't matter. But the thing is, you're, you're, you're both dwarves, so you're not really providing a huge amount of cover. No, uh, I'm just going to stand behind next to it, because I usually do. So. But no, so I was just yeah. looking for a place I can just kind of look from look from the side, but keep an eye on things, normally, mm -hmm. but I can't. If I can't do it, I can't do it. So. Okay. Well, Cordell will continue to approach then, and he'll uh, get, get his pouch out, ready to hand over a couple of coppers, but... Okay, you're trying to have a look ahead to see exactly how much people are paying. Uh, you see, most people pay one to five coppers. Okay. No. Oh, what is the difference? Uh, what is the difference like for the ship that you go and stuff? You don't know. Or are they paying? Is, is there a group that goes forward? Is it one person paying? Give me a perception roll. Sorry. Give me a perception okay. roll as you do so. Yeah, uh, 22, I think. Yeah, 22. What was that? The result of yesterday's activities. Me doing two inches at a time. Uh, so what did you get, Jeremy? 22. 22. Okay, looking at it, you think uh, 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 the more trouble they've gotten into this place, the more they paid previously. Okay. So if they've been ejected, they might actually have to um, pay more. Okay. And the guards tend to remember who the troublemakers are and make them pay more. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, is that uh, Mrs. Hamilton? In the background, yes. Mm. Also known as, I really shouldn't have been active. Just say that for me. And my coffee machine is broken, it sucks. Okay. I don't know how to put that. Alright, send her my best regards. We will. We will. Hi, Ariana! Uh, 
Oh, she can hear us? Hello! Yeah. We well, have a speaker going here. Yeah. yeah. Um, Anyone of you has a wrench? Drop by. Hit me with it. I, mean, I, 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 I did one of those, but okay. Hey, um, Ariadna, I'm just about to go past the Federal Highway. If you could just um, send me a coffee on the way through, that'd be great. Sure, sure. You just get good guys to finally fix the fucking thing, and we will. No, I can do yeah. that. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Not a good day for me. Yeah. Um, I'm going to just try and get Jeremy's attention saying, you you're paying for all this? Yeah. Oh, okay, so, <coughs> Cordo's going to walk up. Um, he says, first, first time visitor are you? He, he asks. I've heard one of the good place. Is it my first time visiting? Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, Luna just... Uh, like step up and said, "Oh, um, you're you're, you're showing to are you?" He says. <laughs> it, it, it will show up and down. And, and I like flex my tattoos. Like, oh, you noticed? Yes. Um, we have a special deal going on Shawanti today. It's a, a, a silver entry. Uh, what special deal? Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Shuffles under his breath. It, it, it's a special um, uh, welcome um, prize for show Andy. Welcome what? Party. Well, well, welcome to the party, welcome yes. Welcome prize, my friend. Prize. Oh, welcome prize. Okay, I did yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Special deal just for you. Oh, special deal. That's special deal is what it is. It, it's because you're showing Andy oh, such it's, a special deal. It's only people. a silver for you to answer. It's only how much? One silver. <laughs> oh, the, uh, the, the this nice man uh, is the one that is paying, right, brother? He's, he's asking money from you, yes. Well, uh, is that is that your pay, right, brother? Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to uh, deprive you of the opportunity of your special right. <laughs> Can I do a yes, and it is such an honor and a privilege. You have to pay. If it's your first time, you have to pay it yourself. It's part of the experience. Yes, the, the guards just say they wouldn't want to deprive you of having such special treatment. Okay, then I pick up one guy and give to the guard. Okay, he welcomes you aboard and uh, then looks at the others and says uh, that would be uh, uh, one copper. I look like to point to um, Corda. Why, why, why my special deal was, like, was actually more expensive? Cordo will hand over the, what, four or five copper, quite if we didn't. He hands back... He'll hand over five copper, because that's what he prepared for with the idea. Uh, he, he, he hands um, back four coppers and says we only asked for one and welcomes the rest of you on board. Now, for your time, thank you. You can, you can see I'll leave like, the copper. I'll leave the copper on the bench there for him. Okay. You you can see like um, in his face when you were uh, as we he's going past it and talking to Luna quietly. He said, "Don't press it. We're here to get information. Just keep moving." Can I do a? But, yeah, and Bellas ruffles Luna's hair and just says, "Come on, little one, let's go." Can I just do a check of what? You can see her face like, like going reddish, red like she's she uh, is like trying so hard just to not like say it. Uh, you, you can see they all have bailing pins or saps or clubs or yeah. uh, bludgeoning sort of weapons. Just to, just to knock people out. You can still kill them when you knock them out. But I'm just saying they're more kind of used to subdue them actually kind of. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, gotcha. I was always yeah. wanting to check on the way through. Yep. Did, did you see um, that Bellas wins. Bellas wins to one of the guards as he walks by. And Luna just like uh, turn to Bellas and say, "You you saw that, Mister Bellas? He he abused my good will." No, Luna. You are silly enough to abuse hospitality by asking how much it would cost. Don't worry guy. about it. Let's just guard. keep going. Uh, there were uh, ten guards here. He yeah. said he, he, he said he wa he had a special no, deal for that. No, 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 no,
And I, I, I do don't, don't talk too much and don't get into trouble. Uh, as you come a bit further along, you see that two uh, of the um, enforcers were uh, sitting back um, in the shadows with crossbows um, ready. Um, well, I stopped playing and leaning down now that there are you showed the guards and says very quietly, it's important for them to think that they sleep with us. The silver for us is nothing for them, it's huge. What it does is it makes them like me and the rest of the party all, and it makes them feel like that they've come up on our boat to make them uncomfortable. But they believe it because it would be their downfall. <laughs> And another thing yeah, Luna would it. also know is that um, Selachians of Corvosa in general think poorly of the Shalanti because they constantly uh, fight with each other. Oh, that's why they are like shady and stuff. So you, you are technically the, the racial enemy of Corvosa. Why? And a little bit of extra knowledge. And a little bit of extra knowledge for Luna. Uh, the castle um, that Corvosa is based around was one of the uh, Shoanti holy sites before the uh, Chilaxians um, kicked the Shoanti off this island. Oh, okay. And the city itself is exactly as well. It's not where you, it's not where your tribe was from. Shady people, man. Um, I don't like this place well, anymore. Well, well, Cor Corgar's uh, looking around at the, the ship, like, they're still on the pier at this stage, I'm assuming. Yep, it's still on the pier. He's looking mm -hmm. around. Um, does any of the ships named Eel's End? Ah uh, yes, the um, big warship that is about uh, twice as big as the others that doesn't have any signage, does have eels end on there. Are there any people on that ship, on the deck? Uh, yes, you can see up on deck um, uh, six uh, guards at the top of the gangplank, each with um, crossbows ready. It's not going to appear to be set for uh, guests to actually on the eel deck. Doesn't actually have any um, guests up there, as far as you can tell. Okay. Uh, so it's a, it's a larger ship off tied off at the end, has the name Eel End on the side. Its figurehead is a coiling eel with a woman's head. Uh, several drunken sailors and revelers dance and drink um, in front of the uh, ramp going up. But the back end of the ship is uh, pretty much screened off. With the um, symbol of a spider painted over uh, the screens. And does it look like the um, spider banner from place to place? Uh, it's the same um, symbol you saw on the enforcers. Okay. And what was the question mark? So the ten guards down oh. bottom, two we saw going past. Mm -hmm. Came on the uh, ship again? Uh, there were there two with um, crossbows pointing towards any uh, person who causes trouble at the entrance. Yep. There are six with crossbows up on the uh, deck of uh, Eel's End. Yep, yep. Basically being able to um, uh, shoot at any of the boats in the vicinity because they have the high ground. Yep. Is there any kind of melee kind of or other guards up there too? Uh, not that you can tell because it is um, above your eye line. That's cool. I'm, uh, I just I'm just, as we go through, I'm just going to keep an eye on how many people are around today. Mm -hmm. So how many people are somebody has to burn on fire, that's all. Do you wish to uh, enter one of the other ships first? Well, okay, okay. Can we get, from the dock, so we can get onto any of the ships from the dock, can we? Uh, you can get onto any of the ships from the docks, just the only one that has guards on it is Eel's End. Okay. Um, but there are people dancing, carousing on the docks as well? There are, like, yes. Mm. So, 
Just that they weren't visible from where you were before because the boats were able to obscure them. Okay. Ah, uh, well. Cordell will aim to just uh, mingle amongst that crowd initially to so we get a, 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 a good look at the, the five different ships and then think about which one I want to try and get onto first of all. Okay, so um, you've had the description of Eel's End. Uh, the yeah. Golden Hawk is a small ship seen that's seen countless crude repairs. Uh, uh, it, it doesn't, doesn't look seaworthy, but it's slashed to the pier. Uh, the, the nameplate does, does say Golden Hawk, Hawk on the side of it. And what was the original description of the Golden Hawk? Uh, places to sleep. Mm. Okay, yep. Yeah. And uh, you, you can, can see, see a, a uh, gnome head um, uh, poking over the side, side of the railing, staring at the revelers. He, his beard is um, missing chunks, <laughs> and his hat is quite um, crumpled. Mm -hmm. uh, across, across from it is the uh, two hot light structures sitting on a barge, lots, lots of laughter coming from it. And periodic um, shouts of victory come from within. And that's got the name, the Twin Tigers, on the side of it. And you know that is the gambling hall. Okay, yep. And a little bit further down uh, is the House of Clouds. A single long structure sits on top of the main deck of this, this barge, one of the lowest of the boats. The double doors always hang open to reveal a large room decorated with fur rugs, pillows, and the air thick with incense, and lit by red paper lanterns. The set of An Annie's rose water and cinnamon pours forth from smoking bronze braziers set on silver stands, which are carved in the likeness of slit-eyed serpents and proud hunting birds. Several scantily clad men and women uh, loiter about the bar's deck, and uh, unlike what Balath has normally heard, uh, this place does not have a lot of patrons today. Normally it would um, be fairly busy, but you think with the Temple of Lost having opened in the city recently with its uh, cheap sex. With its, with its, with its opening specials? <laughs> yeah. That's my call. That is true. And then opposite that is the Dragon's Breath Corridor. Uh, you see the dragon's breath um, painted on the side, and it's been painted a gaudy red, the ship itself. And it has a sign by the gangplank saying, Pass into the dreams of the dragon. And you can see uh, uh, puffs of um, smoke coming out the side of the building. And Having um, heard of various establishments like that, you probably won't keep your wits once you go in there. Mm -hmm. You don't really need to buy much. Um, pretty much um, passive smoking is almost as bad as actual smoking. But you do see that um, both the um, House of Clouds and the Dragon's Breath Corridor also have ramps up onto Eel's End. And neither of them seem guarded. Mm -hmm. so, um, well, I say that if he's into that style of the house, possibly he may be interested in some of the, uh, the what was it, fly leaf and pests that we've recently acquired. <laughs> Quite possibly, so, because they all come in handy. I think I even um, have the reference for um, most of those items now. Uh, yeah, figure out where, where I put it. Mm. Excuse me. I don't know about snap leaf, not fade leaf there. But I'll have it in one of my other books. Okay. Um, so, which one do you wish to head on to first? Well, I'm thinking that possibly the, the gambling hall might be the most convenient place to at least start wanderings, but uh, Cordy is happy to follow the directions of those who are more used to such establishments. Okay. 
So, uh, Ed... Well, I think, I think we've lost David at the moment. Probably. He's probably busy with something. He'll be back when he can. Yeah. So, Ed, as you yeah. walk up, you hear a um, splash next to you as someone is tossed into the water. Uh, and you hear the uh, statement oh. of um, uh, no, uh, no money, uh, no walk. Which uh, was, were they thrown from? Uh, they were thrown from the uh, Twin Tigers boat. Um, oh, David's back. Good to see. Hey, sorry about that. All good. Um, you, you pop in and out as you need to. So uh, you, you hear the splash of someone being tossed from the uh, Twin Tigers, uh, and uh, you hear a guard, sh- uh, one of the enforcers, shout, uh, you can come back when you can cover your debt. I know um, that sound. Cord- that sound too well. Cordon will actually go and have a look over the side and just see whether or not the guy, whoever it was, flying over, is moving, swimming, Looks like I'll get to get to the pier or anything. Uh, looks like he's trying to swim um, down closer to shore because uh, they've set things up so there's there, there's nothing to pull yourself up on at this end of the pier. Right. And you think that's been done intentionally? So if someone gets tossed into the water, there's a fairly long swim of shame up for them. But the person does appear to be swimming effectively. They're not so drunk that they're just thinking or anything? Well, uh, you, you, you have heard that anyone who grows up in Corvosa who can't swim, uh, generally um, it is uh, uh, someone who never really grew up here. Because they're surrounded by water, it's a, it's a common pastime. Yeah, no, but I say, if he was, if he was so, if, he, if he'd run out of money because he was so drunk and bad at gambling, then I just want to make certain he was actually Swimming effectively, but he, he, if he, he appears to be under control, uh, Cordar will continue to watch for a little while, but he'll then aim to move back in toward what's happening with the rest of the party with the gambling. So. He, he's not going to win any uh, swimming contest, but he'll eventually make it. He's not going to clear. Yeah. yeah. So. Though he, he may uh, potentially call a predator in the lake because it does look like a wounded animal trying to get through the water. Well, so I was saying, this water doesn't look like anything like the water at Sandpoint, and so it's obviously not got the same feet, the same predator, so it should be safe. <laughs> it is a lot uh, murkier here as well. So you can't actually see the uh, pristine ocean floor. This is the river that runs past Corvosa on its way out, so this is where the dregs of the uh, city's refuge comes. Yeah. So you see, it's probably not even salt water, so the sharks can't possibly survive. <laughs> okay. Um, Balak cuts his hand and dry, lets two or three drops of blood fall to the water. Then... Just, just in, the, in case it would help, huh? And you can see there are many um, different um, uh, gambling games going on there. There are dice games, there are card games. There are spinning wheels and lots of coins going everywhere, and uh, yeah, someone and someone um, uh, playing a game with Sorry. knives. Knives. Yep. I don't have any money right now in my character, so I can't do anything. This well, I'm sure you would have some money. No, no. I, according to my character sheet, I have zero money because of all my stuff. I haven't, I haven't got any money from any adventures yet. Just let you know. I have, thought, uh, I have drugs on me, but that's about it. Okay. No one in this group got our our gambling. I was going to say, there was at least there was at least twelve gold pieces amongst the party treasure. Yeah, no, definitely not trusting Sparky with gold or silver or any copper around you. See what I mean? Well, that, uh, it was more the idea of whether or not they're being distribution of party treasure. <laughs> I feel we haven't had the discussion yet, so I'm going to say I had nothing. Okay. Because yeah, no. uh, well, while I would like to be in the knife game, I've got no money, so that's why I said you're paying for me. That's why I said that for a reason. So. Okay, so the yeah, game. Bella, Bella looks to looks to Cordaro and just sort of gives him a slashing motion along his throat. Big snake on the old game, my friend. 
uh, well, no, it's got Kurt, yes. Kurt and Lee Cordar were not talking about party gold at that point. It was more the idea that the, 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 the concept that any of the PCs don't have any money on them at the present time, because technically the party takes some money to distribute. But if we haven't done it, that's fine. It'll still all be in the uh, the party loot that Cordar's carrying in his sack. Yeah, um, yeah, Sparky hasn't been in any distributions yet. No, I know that because I've got well, I've written that one out. Yeah, so. All good. I'm going to use the Bellacan corner. Was it I had Bellacan handle his money over? Oh, great idea. Yeah, hundred percent good idea. Yeah, admittedly, <laughs> considering this is stuff that was found under the crow, along with the, at the time of that guy exploding sack. Um, it's basically it's Bellath, Cordo, and Nexo, isn't it? The yep, very much so. Oh, well. oh but I so think that was a shield. Oh, no, it's in both, definitely one there in. Oh, yeah, that's right. So that guy, and, and, and four gold to your, your loot there, uh, David. I'll add four gold to mine, and we might walk into any next time. Let's go through. <laughs> Yeah, all, copy, no all I've got is a shield and a um, and a bag of um, failing. Yeah, that just shows how you get the work And the rest <laughs> of the drugs are in your in your ball sack. So. Okay. Um, okay. Right, let's go. So Corda is going to be aiming to just do just wandering around the boat, particularly around the edges of the boat, looking at the games, but also looking at the other boats and the other access points and things like that. Okay, so while you're having a look around, you're met by a Burundi man uh, who introduced himself as um, Pungit. He's a man from the uh, southern continent. Southern continent. Uh, Cordo is happy to chat with him. So, says, you look like someone who is not from here. Uh, good man. What are you into? What sort of vice would you like to uh, spend your coin on? Oh, okay. So he's he's not one of the uh, other uh, customers. He's one of the one of the staff. He's trying to get me involved. Is that what you're saying? He, he looks as if uh, he, he he's dressed to impress, and uh, you can see someone who looks very much like him um, running most of the games. Okay. Oh, wow. At this stage, I'm uh, enjoying the atmosphere and I left a test and looking to see what the luck is like on the table before I before I join in. Do you mind if I, you don't mind if I look for it, do you? I don't mind if you look for a bit. Uh, he does recommend um, getting yourself into a game of knives because uh, it's always fun to uh, bet on the winner and uh, get a little bit more than you put in. Not always guaranteed, though. Uh, I've seen that. I've seen that. I've heard that game before. Well, that's one where you have two people who are um, tied um, by one hand together, and a knife is put in the middle of the table. And then there is uh, uh, people get to um, bet for who they believe the winner is going to be, and the winner is either the person who um, scoops the uh, most gold off the table, or the person who's conscious at the end. And you can win by uh, either stabbing the person or gaining all the gold. Or presumably having bet on the winner. Uh, and yes, and basically the winner who is the person who has the most gold and is conscious. And then um, half of whatever they um, scoop into their bag uh, is distributed amongst um, the people who bet standing on their side of the table. Wow, I mean, it does sound like my style of game. Uh, it's the, uh, but, uh, so, are there any games going on with any uh, participants at this stage? Well, we, we I'm not certain I'm just joining in, but I might well bet on the, uh, the, the, likely, the likely combatants. Well, the uh, last um, competitor we had couldn't actually put up his stake and uh, ended up swimming home. Right. So we don't recommend betting more than you have because we don't do credit here. That's understandable. And if you can happen to bring us a game of chance that we like, we will pay you handsomely for it. Yeah, well. 
Yeah, it really is. We have to like it, not that, uh, and uh, want to use it. So it has to be something favorable to this establishment and the people we deal with. That's understandable. So, yeah. I will uh, take a look and see if I, see, see if I can uh, recognize any games that aren't being played at this time. Okay, L looking around, you see many um, games you've seen sailors play uh, with the understanding that uh, uh, there is a percentage going to the house from every game. Yep. And people right. have to uh, pay for receipts to play. Well, certainly, uh, whilst Cordaro is, is in a he's wandered around a bit in his life. He has, like a, he's never been a uh, particular gambler, so therefore, for a case of yes, he, I doubt he'll know any games that aren't being played, and he might recognise a few of these. So, so, um, uh, are any of the other party members trying to do anything at the present time? I'm going to, is anyone well, I've got one of the staff members distracted. <laughs> I'm going to, I wouldn't mind against back, I was going to ask him about Dwarven Games, but we'll see how yeah. you go. is basically like we're just watching people get more stuff. You know, I once knew of a game, not really of chance, but perhaps of skill. They called it Halfly Tosca. <laughs> it was very, very interesting. Great to bet as well. We don't have a halfling in the party. <laughs> well, short of a halfling, perhaps a dwarf. We have plenty of those. I, I, uh, the uh, guy, uh, guy says, I think you're on the wrong boat to the halfling tossing or dwarf tossing. There is a boat just across there that is really into that sort of thing. I think I, I think I. Um, uh, Bella okay. pretends like the guy didn't even talk. He has absolutely no no acknowledgement of him. Well, Cordar is interested to know which boat he was looking talking about. Uh, the House of Clouds. He was pointing right. to the brothel. <laughs> yes. and, and let's face it, that's probably not a reasonable interpretation of what Bella said. The type of tossing that he could do. <laughs> I, I'm going to, I'm not, 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 I'm getting involved. Yeah, well, I'm not going to be able to guy in any way. I'm just, what, what games do I see? Is there any Dwarven games that I see at the moment? Doesn't seem to be any Dwarven games. Most of the Dwarven games are fairly fair. None of these games look fair. That's fair enough. No, no not really fair enough. It's, it's, it's very rich. watch and use my thievery. Mm -hmm. I just want to watch and see... How much they kind of take enough? To, what kind of cheating they're doing? Kind of thing. Okay. Just watching. Just not going to get involved. So. Twenty-one. I'm just going to watch. Going. Just going to over maybe a couple of minutes. Just watch and just see how. Okay. So so while you're watching, you do um, notice uh, uh, the other Drudrian uh, Drudrini uh, um, guy uh, gesture towards you in um, these pants, saying, um, uh, "You don't want to do that." But I'm not just watching. I'm not doing anything. I'm not gonna say anything else. Can I? Can I? And thieves can't say. Just watching. Not gonna do anything. They could, could st stir up your business. There's no thief handling part of it, is there? I believe there is. Okay. One of the other owners of the establishment. So if there is, I'm just gonna get you back saying, I'm not gonna stop your stop your place. Just watch. He he recommends you move on in thieves camp. This is his establishment. Um, no. I say understood. I'll, I'll go elsewhere, and I'll just look away from the game. Just to say, say what that. sort of what, what sort of stakes are actually being put on the table for, in the various games? Mainly coppers. coppers? You, you'll see an occasional silver, and uh, you, you do hear that uh, in the uh, game of knives is is the only time they actually pull out gold, but very few people can afford to put a gold piece down, when a gold piece really is um, a, hun a hundred of their uh, times their daily earning. Yeah. Um, well, uh, sorry, particularly if no one else has actually uh, gone into the game, Cordai's thinking that, oh goody, so we're really sitting out here, so he'll actually sit down at one of the dice games. Yep, they, they, they charge you a copper to sit down. Yep, and he'll, he'll, uh, get down to, 
<laughs> he'll pull out the uh, a, a small handful of copper and sit on the table in front of him. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, um, Bellart will give Sparky and Luna ten copper each. You're rich. I do not accept. Oh no! You give Luna money to gamble. Considering I've got a oh, thief man. watching me, a thief. I'm not going to involve any gambling because I'm going to cause problems if I do that. So, um, if he accompanies it with "Go, children, go and play," I ignore him again. I'm not accepting it. I'm being watched by another thief, and I'm not going to get involved in these games. So, you don't know that, but that's what I'm doing. Um, yeah, but the balance says to you, "Go, children, go play." I still know you. Ignore you. So, so uh, apparently, you're ten coppers richer than you expected to be. If I, oh, I say uh, give it to Luna, I say give it to Luna. Stand out like bulls, that's it, just go and play. I'm not playing. I'm not quite blunt when I say that too. I'm, I'm looking in a different direction at all the gambling games, by the way. Okay, Jeremy, give me a deception roll as you um, try to gamble. Uh, well, Corda, I certainly don't attempt to get any deception whatsoever. He's playing... Completely, he understands the rules, which is probably incomplete. Um, so I'm happy to go with a, 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 a straight roll or a penalty on the roll type to get what else I receive. Well, if you don't have deception, then there is a penalty on the roll for you. Well, I mean, I'm not trained in deception, but then a car finder you get your to get plus three on it normally. Yep. But as I say, I'm not, I'm not attempting to deceive. So. Uh, the, the entire, all the games here are all about deception. Oh yeah, I realise that. <laughs> Which is actually why I chose dice games rather than a card game, but there's definitely bluffing involved. So, so how, how, how did, did you go on your deception roll? Uh, 18. 18, okay, so after sitting down, um, even though you, you say you don't know how to play, uh, you end up with about um, uh, 15 coppers. Fifteen coppers on top of what I started with. Yep. Okay. <laughs> uh, and hearing some people say beginners luck. Well. The as I say, if Gallant and Sparky are um, within earshot of Corda when they're trying to be encouraged to go and uh, play or things like that, Corda will just go and say, "What's Sparky?" It's obviously one of these other boats, there must be something to enjoy upon. Uh, yes. Is there a bar anywhere? There is a. Uh, not on this ship. Okay. Well. <laughs> oh, no, I've got no money, so I can't really do much, so I'm really not going to get in. But you've got 10 copper now. I'm going to go buy a glass of water. Well, that's what I'm doing. Or at least managed to close the uh, atmosphere in the background. Mm. Yeah, I'm Corner I confused him with this open and honest gameplay. He did. <laughs> um, Bellath decides to join in on what he thinks to be the most uh, mind gaming version of a card game. Okay, he finds a nice card game. Give me a deception roll. What would Bella throw about deception? <laughs> sure, two seconds, please. No, nothing as well. Uh, just a measly 29. Okay. So, uh, after sitting down and playing um, a few hands of cards, uh, you find yourself with um, three silvers. And uh, you get tapped on the shoulder by one of the um, uh, owners. He says, I, I think you may be cheating there, sir. Uh, 
He brushes the hand away. He brushes it. He brushes the hand away. Do not touch me. He says, um, "Sure." He clicks his fingers, and you see uh, two of the enforcers come up over to you. Sorry, I have a crack perception. So you, you, you hear that click of fingers from him as he calls over two enforcers who stand behind you. Ooh, might be a little I guess. And he says, so uh, let's try that again, shall we, uh, Mr. Fancy Pants? Yeah, just push him like a little bit. Kona will stand up, uh, leaving half his point, half his winnings behind on the table. And, uh, but hey, we're all friends here. Yes, but this one here seems to be cheating. I assume you're going to want me to make another deception roll. I'll give it a go. Yep. to support or possibly hinder the effect of people to try and say anything like that, but say anything like, oh, come on, you're right, okay. I'm sure it's all just a misunderstanding. And, uh, <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm back. Um, I assume you wanted another deception roll from me. Yeah, if that's the case, 22. Okay. On the 22, um, he, he does point out uh, that uh, <laughs> counting cards is illegal in his establishment. Same guy that me. Uh, no. uh, that, that's that the guy who did the thieves can to you. Yeah. He, he says that counting cards is illegal in his establishment, and he would uh, ask you to uh, finish up your nights uh, lucky with the winnings you've earned. Do, do, do you mind if we uh, take the opportunity to partake of some of the old places that the yield's in? As long as you leave his boat, he's happy. Otherwise, you might be swimming home. Uh, there's no need for that. That's alright. We can definitely be going. Can't be done. Let's go. And, and he does. He uh, points his fingers at his own eyes and points his uh, um, uh, points those fingers at um, Bella, gesturing that he'll be watching you. So there's no sign of the king of the spiders on this ship. Not on the gambling boat. Oh, you know, I've gone to the bar, haven't you? So. I'm going to go to the Dragon's Breath. So the, um, most of the alcohol's been served on the pier. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So drunken's are easy to get rid of. Can I go up and ask for a water? Uh, they charge you a silver for fresh water. Is it tin copper? Yeah. Oh, sorry. The, the alcohol's cheaper than the water. Because they use the water to dilute the alcohol. That's fine. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm just going. I'm just going. Yeah. Okay. Um. And because I'm waiting for somebody. No wonder. No wonder. Uh, Sparky's got no money. <laughs> uh, Sparky, while no one's there. Yeah. He's gonna just talk to the guards. Going. How's Sparky paying for it? He's, he's, he's got ten copper. From, he's got ten uh, copper. Uh, okay. So he's going. How do I get a meet me to Vega? I'll ask. I'll ask. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I was waiting for somebody to do that the whole time. And I feel like the party's going in other directions where we should be. So. <laughs> so. Says, uh, normally you get requested a, uh, for an audience with him. You generally don't request it. Okay. But you've let yourself. If you've let someone know that you're interested, and I'm sure it will get back to him. Okay. And who should I say is interested? Sparky. He pauses for a moment. Is that really a name? Unfortunately. 
That's my that's my short name. I gave him a pay Thrama and Respark. I says my but I, everyone calls me Sparky. Okay. I better check on my friends, make sure they're causing too much trouble. Okay. At which point you see them getting off the boat. Yeah, cool. Uh, okay, but uh, Corner will be aiming to get off the boat onto like Dragon's he- breath. heading towards the uh, eel's end or whichever, which, like not going straight back to the dock. But next, next one along is the Dragon's breath. Okay, yep. Uh, You're welcomed um, by a uh, very skinny short man. Uh, he he looks very um, uh, like he come from the nations of Tian, mm-hmm. and he. I know the nations of Tian. Uh, Tian are very Asian oriented. Asian okay, player. So, so Korda probably recognizes some similarities with Amiko. Um, what's her name? Amiko. Amiko, yes. Same point. I was about to say that to him. And he says, so, um, I, I am your host for this evening. Uh, how may I serve your um, uh, dragon's pleasure? I have Shiva, Pesh, Leaf, and various other um, less well-known um, items for your uh, inebriation. And my name is Bezentari. Bless you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> um, the... Uh, I, I, I'm not certain that... Uh, this is uh, quite what I'm looking for this evening. Um, uh, so I don't... Hmm. I, I'm sure it's all delicious or something. Well, if you'd like to um, pay to enter, I'm sure I will uh, be able to give you a delight of the senses like you've never experienced. Yeah. I, you, you say that there was, you, you had pesh and other things. To be honest, I've already got some pretty good fish. So, what would you like to share? We, we have uh, much uh, on offer here. It's always nice to meet a uh, fellow user. Hmm. Well, I could pot- we could potentially sell. What would you... Who, 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 who would be the best person to talk to us uh, to conduct such business? Well, I would be the best person to talk to. How much would you... You, you, um, you don't own this establishment, do you? I, I do own this establishment. The Eels End? Uh, well, not the Eels End. I own the um, Dragon's Breath Corridor. Uh... Sorry, I just appeared. Oh, okay. <laughs> good. But uh, is, it, is it not the eel's end that is the uh, overseer of this? Yes, e- eel's end provides the, provides the enforcers to make sure this place is safe for all users. Uh, he, he, he is I mean, the governing our body. instructions were to find the vices of the King of Spiders, so I'm assuming it's one of the other four ships that in which we will find the vice that is he subject to? Well, you're trying to find the vice of the ambassador from the King of Spiders. Yeah, which yeah. so the King of Spiders is presumably going to be on the, the, the eel's end, the big boat that had the guards in front of it. So. Okay, sorry about that. No, no, that's right. Says, so, um, if, if you would just like to uh, tell me why you're here, I might be able to help you. If, you're not, if, you, if you've got something to sell, I'd be happy to buy. I, I do have uh, buy at a lower rate than I sell it, though. Someone's going to make a profit after all, he says. It's, it's understandable. Um, whew. Yeah. The... Are we allowed to just wander around? 
Well, he, he's he's first asking for payment before you wander on uh, across his boat. How much does he want? He's asking for um, five gold payment, which gives you access to inside his um, uh, establishment. You've got lots of drugs in your bag there, by the way, Jeremy. And do we have to actually go through his establishment in order to get to the Eel's End? Uh, you can go back down to the docks from the gambling ship, uh, the yeah. Twin Tigers, and then pass the guards up onto Eel's End. Oh, you know, no, 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 like the, uh, like, when I say establishment, like, into the smoke hall type stuff. Do we actually have to go through the smoke hall to get to the Eel's End? Uh, no, but he's charging you to go around it as well. To get into onto the boat in the first place, yeah. Yep. That makes sense. He uh, says he just has one price, and you can spend as long as you wish it. Uh, so, in, in the end, um, if, if you have a great constitution, you'll probably more than make up for what you spend on entry. So you'll get your five gold worth, but most people don't. <laughs> yeah. For so five gold, I wouldn't even want access to your own back door, let alone your ship. Well, if we go down the stairs, go down the stairs and ask the rest of the party to check out the House of Clouds, um, it may cover both of these off. I mean, I don't mind spending 20 gold pieces you know, have certainty about the dragons. Well, uh, exactly. So, so, thank the gentleman. Um, we might just uh, explore further and then uh, come back to uh, finish the night in such a pleasant sense. And remember, if you do have excess to sell, he's always willing to buy. Perhaps if they claim it towards the five gold? If you have enough. Uh, it sounds like we've got the place that uh, one should finish the night rather than start it. If I'm going to get full value for the evening. Most people start and finish here, he says. I can well make him. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, he will quite happily uh, step back off, assuming that we're allowed back on to the gambling deck. You are allowed back on. back on and uh, I watched as you exit down onto okay. the docks. Yeah, okay. So happy to walk back off it to get to, get to, the, to get the dock. That's happy again. Um, and then once back at the dock, yeah, we'll probably try and effectively get towards the bar where Sparky is. Yep. Yep. And, uh, just and you, you see him drinking room. from a, a rarity, a, a clean glass of water. Well, the, the dwarf Sparky probably has been looking for the uh, ambassador, maybe. We're not necessarily expecting or required to see the ambassador himself here. We just believe the ambassador might be here, but if we do meet the ambassador, we don't necessarily want to talk to him or interact with him. So. Okay. Or the so. so does Sparky talk about what she was told at the... If people come back down, I'll... Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. We've returned the bar and basically... Yeah, so I said I've requested a meeting, so... Because you guys are taking so long, so... I said, oh... Oh, the water's expensive, by the way, but it's nice. So. Sexually, uh, what the, the only drink you've seen with help, please? Yeah, that's my fun. I'm fine. I said, I'm just waiting while you guys have your fun. That's, I'm cool. Did it look like you were expecting to get a meeting soon? He, mainly if it, I intrigue him, I expect to get a meeting. I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon, but... but I put my name down, and if he requests me, he'll let me know. I'm sure. And I look at the guard. Well, the guards are shooting in here in distance right now. So. Well, the, you can see multiple guards in here in distance. Yeah. The guard that I spoke to is there. He's, he's back. Yes. Yeah. He, he went. He went and came back to deal. Yeah. I said, "Oh, well, let us know." So, but you guys have your fun if you need to. Well, I was going to get a corner and look to Bella and say, "Yes." Do you reckon you could? Convince the guards of the uh, word has been given, and we're meeting up with them with to go and see him. Uh, I can convince anyone of anything. Do you really want to see him? Well, if he's there, if the opportunity's available. 
We might be able to get the whole thing out. Right, well, we so that's good as the subtle way or the loud way? Well, I think thinking that... I guess we'd like to find out if he can be assassinated or taken care of. Um, but we'd like to, the option of backing out. I think, we said want to talk to him. Well, these dense spies are very much boring me, so let me go see what I can do. You, bartender, slash guard, slash whatever it is that you do, tell me where the ambassador is for a much desire to speak with him. No, no, we're not going to see the ambassador. For the ambassador. Okay, wait, sorry. <laughs> he he looks at you and really says, really which, which ambassador, ambassador are you looking for? We're after the After the Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, he, this is how much Bella cares about this. Um, sure, him, whoever. That guy, where, where is he? Give me a diplomacy check. Oh, I don't know how to do it, please. <laughs> you mean too uh, well? Well, apparently, I don't know how to do it too well. Uh, we got 19. 19, okay. Uh, he says... Yes, I, I expect a silver tongue to um, trip over his own tongue in a place like this, the guard says. Oh, shit. Yeah, shit's going oh. to shit's going Be down. careful entering into a battle of wits, my friend. You seem to be unarmed. Son? Yep. Corda attempting to assist the, uh, the diplomacy check, um, got uh, 17, mm -hmm. but um, basically saying that, yes, yes, the uh, uh, say. Uh, yes, fellas, we were, we were asked to see Divago, we were directed to come here to um, meet him. Bella looks to the guard with an almost apologetic gaze and then sort of begs for his help to get rid of Port Arthur. It says, and uh, who sent you here? The guard says. <laughs> yes, as it's who sent you. We just received the message that we were to see him. And who sent the message? <laughs> Devago doesn't meet with just anyone. I'm going to just shake my head right now. Just let you know. Who was it you were talking to, Bath? That uh, you recognised the guard? Are you serious? You're really going to try and drag me into your nonsense here? But you're the one that actually got freed first. <laughs> yeah, no, he's he's playing. He's actually saying that again. Yeah, no, okay, okay. Well, you're going to drag me into your nonsense here. I'm going to ask you. Well, I originally thought they were my friends. I'm stepping five, ten minutes away right now. So I, I will give um uh um David a opportunity to switch to intimidation if you'd prefer to do to make the guys do his bidding that way. Uh, considering, uh, so considering they know your going to, because they know your family he's going name. To look back to the guards. Yeah, he's going to go back to the guard, uh, turn back to the guards, and attempt to apologise for what I was interrupting, and then continue on his diplomancy uh, for a brief moment of time to see how it goes. The reason I was saying that is everyone who knows your family name is generally more intimidated by it than anything else. As yeah, no, that's fine. Still going to give the diplomacy another go, mm -hmm. uh, and then if that doesn't work, he will get halfway through a sentence and remind them of their intimidation. Sorry, remind them of their fears of what's the silver tongue. So uh, I'm also going to point out that your previous role was a critical fail. Fucking hell! Right? Okay. On the diplomacy. Um, Right, did, did, well. did Corda bring it up to a fail with his? Uh, no, um, that was that would have also been a critical fail. Right. Yeah, no, I got more than you, Jeremy. No, no, but, but you could aid another. You don't need to get the same target. You've got a much lower target, haven't you? Uh, DC 20. Oh, is it? Okay. Sorry, you would have just failed. Yep, okay. All right, let's switch to intimidation. Oh, that's a bit better. Uh, 27. Okay, so you go from a critical fail to a critical success. And, and we'll call it the whiplash effect. 
<laughs> and it, it, it's like a uh, yes, sir. Um, yeah, come this way, sir. We'll take you right to him, sir. Uh, and you can see him pretty so much Nick, being very subservient. Before they, yeah, before they continue, next time I'm gonna try and be nice. Yeah. You'll listen, won't you? I didn't think you were a real silver tongue, sir. <laughs> nice doesn't seem to be in the vocabulary. Do you know that the last time somebody failed to entertain me as well, I fed them to a kraken? <laughs> What's a kraken, sir? A mythical, a not so mythical sea beast. They were alive, too. The sea beast was alive. I'm sure it would have been to eat someone, sir. Are you really throwing shade and sass at me after you've suddenly realised how much you fucked up? Uh, no, you think that's just basically his level of intelligence he thought you were referring to feeding a, a live kraken. Remember the pilot from last night, by the way. You're not really the smartest of creatures, are you? I'm, I'm hired for my looks, not my intelligence, he says. You are quickly <laughs> becoming useless to me alive. Go, fight, show me where I need to be going. Come this way, sir, he says, as he's uh, gesturing for some of the guards to follow. We're coming to it. Yes. Cool. Oh, if I feel that we're going. Certainly following immediately. Well, I'll have gestures for the rest of the... Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll have gestures to the rest of the party. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, so... Go. Uh, you were escorted up onto uh, Eel's End. Uh, you, of which you can see all the other boats below, uh, because it is such uh, it is a whole deck higher, and you see at the far end the um, screens and uh, the uh, uh, symbols of the uh, King of Spiders. Uh, you go to what would have been the captain's cabin, and inside you see this large room has been converted into a throne room. The walls are thick with spider webs, in which scuttle dozens of spiders, some as large as a fist, but most considerably smaller. They seem content to stay in their webs and do not venture into the room itself, which is furnished with two sturdy oaken tables surrounded by chairs. A wooden stage supports the large leather chair covered with cobwebs and scampering spiders. And an iron birdcage hangs from the ceiling like a chandelier. And you can see, sitting on the uh, throne itself, Devar Garbravasi, as uh, you've heard him described. Um, he looks more like a um, brawler than he does a statesman. So, for uh, Jeremy and yep. the others who can see, uh, that's what he looks like. Uh, for Mark... Yeah. He has the symbol of the spider on his chest. And uh, he uh, gestures you uh, to the uh, stairs at the base of his dais that he's thrones on. He says, Ah, another silver tongue I see. First time visitor, is it? And yes, I try not to come down here so often. Well, your sister comes down here fairly often, he says. As does um, yeah. the weather. But I haven't seen them in about a year or two. I probably comes down here every now and again too. Uh, he, he's been banned for about five years. I'm not surprised. Uh, or at least until he pays off his debt. Really? My father owes you money. No, he doesn't owe us money. He owes us a debt. And what is it that my father owes you? That's between me and your father. <laughs> Anyway, we're here for a reason. I'm sure one of these beyonds can tell you what it is. So, uh, uh, one, one of your lackeys is going to talk for you. I appreciate the um, need for such. So, which lackey shall step forward and talk? He says. Oh, the big one. The big one. Lula says, like, I don't know, lackey. <laughs> no, Lula, you're also not lucky either. You're with us. Bad news for you. Uh, yes, the big one. This is Kordar. Uh, I'm sure he has a lot of words to speak. What do you think, sir? Um, we've just heard uh, tales of your 
uh, expertise and knowledge within this city. And uh, it's been a, a slight, slight private matter to discuss with the uh, a, a certain uh, nobleman of a foreign nobleman in the city. Um, we were just thinking that, oh, perhaps we could get some uh, other information about this person and therefore uh, confront him with more ammunition, I guess, might be the best term. He knows many noble men and many noble women. Uh, which who are we speaking about today, he says. The... And... and Say, so, you're willing to trade information on such personnel? Uh, that depends on the personnel, he says. And the price. Would you like me to speak uh, up now, Jeremy? In particular, we're looking for, uh, we're, we're trying to uh, gather some information about uh, a certain collection ambassador, uh, Darvan Guillaume. And, and I actually have um, voice things that I can actually um, push for this, so I was actually seeing if I can actually get it up again, because my uh, Sirenscape keeps uh, crashing at the moment. Okay, let's see what I've got on hand. If it will actually... Uh, do. See if you'll actually give him something. Uh... I'll try it again, this time a bit louder. Okay, so then he, uh, he he's basically asking in the background what brings you to his house. Let's see if I can do that a bit better. Hmm. So, what brings you to my humble establishment? That was him basically doing it. And then into your thing he says, Step forward then. Make a case for what I can help. Obviously, yes, I... Do not have the uh, the flowery words of Lord Sugartan, but yes, we are interested in uh, some uh, potentially valuable information on the selection ambassador, Darwin de Ampere, who's, yes. And uh, you also notice that above you is a um, drake in the ceiling. In the cage. The house race. I've grown a bit fond of you. So Still, there's. I could be convinced to part with you for a paltry sum of 5,000 gold. So there's a house drake in the ceiling above you, in the cage. And was he offering to part with two for 5,000 gold? Uh, the drake in the cage. Oh, sorry, sorry, that was. That was um, uh, the Vargo was saying he was selling the drake for 5,000. Yep. Alright. Oh, I'm looking up at the drake. I guess it's a very small one? Uh, it's, it's one of the, uh, it's, uh, uh, one, like a pseudo dragon, dragon sort of drake. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, actually, yeah, it's a dragon, but yeah, it's a little bit of a thirsty little dragon. So, it, it, it is full sized. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. 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 Has he reacted all to the name? Uh, <laughs> he does, he he does, does know the name. name. Uh, and, and he, he says, says uh, uh, make your case so he can uh, uh, determine uh, what to do. Well, the... So you're saying you do have some information that may be available that we could use to uh, counter the influence of this gentleman? 
He says, depending on the case you put before him, uh, he will give you either uh, what he knows or send you on your way. But you may each um, uh, provide part of the case as you're all part of this yourself. So each of you can make a diplomacy check to see if you can add to whoever does the final check. Bella intentionally goes last. Well, can I make it worse? Uh, no, you can't make it. Oh, actually, uh, you can make it worse. But the the DC for aiding here is lower than normal. <laughs> so, Mark goes first. 15 total. So, 15 total. Uh, Mark is providing a bonus. Here we go. I like this dust. Good dust. Cordar only got 13. Uh, Corda is also providing a bonus as he talks about stuff. About why he should be uh, uh, helping. So what is, what is it Mark's actually asking? What is it um, Sparky's asking for all this information? From the Dwarven perspective. I said, you want... And I said, oh, I'll just say, because I know this guy wants to be able to manipulate the town. I said, and I'll just, I'll be honest with him, because I know that the Pimlical brothel was causing issue with him. I said, I've, I've heard on the room reel this guy is actually linked with the um, Temple of Lust. I believe it's causing some issue with you on your issues. Okay, so you get a bonus because of that. And what is um, uh, our uh, barracks um, case that he puts forward? Uh, I'd rather stay out of it. Well, you, 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 you have I rolled. I got plus four on diplomacy. Uh, I, I believe you did roll, didn't you? So, so that's still better than Corda. <laughs> okay, well, I got 11 for my total. And what, what case um, do you put forward? Oh, uh, whatever Mark was doing. Uh, you got to be different than it can't be the same thing. Um, because it's from your Wild Order um, Druid perspective. Can I do a um, Climacy, not even can I do a okay. thievery kind of whisper in his ear? I feel that he's stumbling. Well, give him a chance to come up with something. I'll let him do that. Yeah. Okay, I've got an option for it. Yeah. What was that? What was Mark saying? Uh, Mark was going to whisper you some options, but I actually said uh, you should probably have a chance to come up with something on your own. It could be simply being that uh, uh, the guy's not from here. Why should someone not from here influence the city? You're not from here, so I, I don't think it's appropriate for you to be influencing the city. Okay. So, so. That, that's all good. And Jeremy, you got your 14, uh, 13. And what else did you add to your um, statement? Well, uh, Cordyce suggested the fact that, well, um, I did notice on the way in that the... Uh, Patronage on the, uh, the the ship of no not the ship of dreams the, ship the, the cloud or something yeah the uh, cloud the, of dreams I think it the, is the, the brothel oh. <laughs> sorry house of clouds fun mm. so, the, 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 the patronage on the brothel was uh, diminished he says, I had uh, heard some rumours that uh, this the uh, play was. Uh, in, in, in working with the uh, this Pinwinkle character as part of his attempt to uh, uh, gain gain influence and power within the city, surely you would agree that it is worth the opportunity to take him down before he can do so. Uh, he shakes his fist in the air at the at the name Pinwinkle, and you see a blade um, uh, stick out um, up from his fist about. Uh, the length of his wrist. Uh, give you an idea of how big the blades look. Very Wolverine like. Yep, okay. Uh, as he uh, says, Pimwinkle! Yeah. Mm. So, yes, you yes. do get a bonus from that one. He, he is certainly someone who we are also opposed to. However, he seems to have gained power in the city very quickly, and we think it's better to uh, diminish his. 
uh, support network before going after him directly. And uh, uh, then we have Victor. What does Victor roll? I roll a 13. You roll a 13. And what do you add to your statement? What, uh, what's the start that you're adding? Uh, and what do you say as your justification for why he should help you? Um, because you are a good guy. You like it, joke. <laughs> that requires a roll. Because you want to help. Because you are a helpful guy. Okay. Uh... He, he, he actually looks startled and surprised for the first time in the entire conversation. <laughs> and he's a little thrown by that, so I'm going to give you a bonus. And that brings us round to um, Balath, who, okay. who gets to state what he's going to do, how he's going to throw it in his favour in the first place, and then I'll tell him what bonus he gets to his role. Okay. So, Balath. Balath. Balath spends quite a bit of time summarizing and reiterating the uh, the good points that everybody has already made. Um, he especially goes over and uh, shows an extreme disdain and disappointment towards Penwinkle, so much so that he is absolutely telling the truth. Um, and then he goes over the point of this uh, this diplomat from Chalice. Is no true representative of Chelyas. He is another one of the idiots who follow those morons of the Temple of Lust and who ruin it for everyone and everything, including the morals and values of Chelyas. Okay. David, one other thing yeah. that, uh, that you might, as a player, you may have remember. Yeah. Remember, Balaf got given a thousand gold to go for a bribe route. Now, whether he wants to spend it, quite happily, except under the he probably pocketed it all. But <laughs> I actually don't remember that at all. Um, also, uh, he's just going to see, he's going to engage in a little bit of talk there and see how well that point is received. Um, like, if he, if he could get a brief judgment or assessment of how his words are being received. Uh, I also rolled a 27. You rolled a 27? Okay, so... Uh, let, let's see what the um, voices say. Uh, and... Uh, you brought this on yourselves. Kill them and dump them in the river. Wrong one. <laughs> wow, that went deep. Well, well, it said negotiations over. It didn't actually say how badly they were. I'm going to do a quick for my day now. Man, that thing's getting pretty high. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. Fail on a 27? <laughs> well, 27 with bonuses because we all support them, apparently. Yeah. Let's see if this one comes out. There we are. Ambassador Ambre has been having an affair with the wife of a rather important noble back in Chelyax. Apparently, the ambassador and this woman have been corresponding since he was stationed here in Corvosa. My initial attempt at extending a hand of friendship to Ampre was rather rudely slapped away, so I <laughs> uh, discovered and confiscated these scandalous letters. I've been watching him squirm as he buys back a letter every few weeks. The fact that he hasn't gone to the guard says plenty about how dangerous the contents could be to his career. Oh, did I mention the woman is the wife of one of his superiors? <laughs> uh, and now the last two are in your hands. Pleasure doing business with you. Okay, so uh, because of the assistance of everyone else, he didn't actually charge you. Um, you, you managed to get over the DC with um, the bonus. The DC was 40. Oh, okay. And because of the assistance nice. from the others, you actually made it. And uh, nice. uh, otherwise, you might have been thrown over the edge. I was tempted to go better at all, Bella. Better at all. So. Uh, 
Bell ethics in talking directly with uh, Spider King, um, and they're finalising the receipt of the letter for bits and pieces. Uh, Paul Dars looked me around, and so he <laughs> took a look at exactly what sort of uh, facilities, numbers of guards, things like that, it might be. But if we come back, or if and when we come back later, to uh, with Nexa, I'm sure she can help. <laughs> Yes, and, 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 and you did notice that this guy really is the king of spiders. He has spiders crawling all over him constantly. Okay, so Nexar may not be all that useful actually in here. Um, I think the... Okay. You, you, you do see um, he does have six thugs here normally, plus the, an extra four that came in with you. Okay. Is there only one way in? There is uh, one main way in. You see the stairs going down into the ship itself, which doesn't have an outside entrance. Yeah. Okay. So we've got potential ways, two ways coming into this room. Okay. And uh, he, he does uh, ask if there's anything else you need now that you've gotten what you came for. I'll just, I'll just give him a thumbs up. Okay. Doing the interaction for the balance and court thing, okay, we'll do our... So, the, um, probably the main thing that's interesting there would be... So, so he's actually got a, a, a real dragon in the cage, does he? Yeah, he does have a real um, dragon in the cage. The uh, house drake is... Uh, or the, um, uh, so the pseudo-dragons and the imps fight over Corvosa all the time. So that they are a common sight. You saw them earlier. Oh, okay. Um, what's holding it in place? A metal cage. Actually, the bird cage. The bird cage. What's holding the cage closed? Uh, a, um, lock. Are you going to throw a dwarf up to the lock and pick it and burn anything else? Is that the direction you were going? No, 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 just thinking about, thinking about how dexterous and impish crow is. Uh, the imp wouldn't want the, um, drake free. Yeah, that's um, well, yeah. I'm assuming you probably don't have to throw the dwarf very high because we're still in a cabin of a ship. So, right. kind of so like to high. give Jeremy an example of what they look like, that is a house drake. Okay, yep. And they are like pseudo dragons. Okay, yep. They are chaotic good creatures. So the exact opposite of the imps. Right. Uh, uh, so presumably somewhat opposite to. Uh, Devago. Very much so. Um, um, can I actual wave at the dragon? You can. It it sort of looks sad. I try to go. I try to give it a smiley face from below. He says, "Still five thousand if you want the dragon." I'll let you know. I say. Oh, we could probably catch one outside. Sparky's going to have to talk to Bella, but what we're going to do here. Anyway, that's nothing. Uh, yeah, no, Bella, Bella. I've got a pet dragon called Bruce. Such a horrible creature, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, I, might, I might talk to the other dwarf later where we're going to do a crazy kind of thing. that we'll work out later. I, I've, got, I've got ideas in my head. Best Ocean's Eleven. Well. <laughs> Well, go. Next, it throws me up. I unlock as a throw up. I do an unlock. I like cats fall. Lay down. Drag comes out, burns everything. Problem sorted. Yeah, I can see no problems here. You son of a bitch! I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just. This is all in my head right now. I'm not into it in first, but it's all my. Yes. Yeah. I'm going. Ooh. But I definitely. In, in the meantime, I'm assuming we're leaving, having got players. Though the, these dragons do confusion breath, not actual flames. Well, this is where Bella comes involved. So, so yes, you, you've been given the letters. I'm trying to kill the thing. Well, I, this is just an idea in my head. I haven't discussed this with you yet. Maybe over a few drinks later. But we'll talk about it. But so the problem is, the problem is, I, I need Nexa. To, I need Nexa to throw me up. Nexa doesn't like spiders, so we've got to, we've got the problem to start off with. So I was like, oh. Oh, the spiders are easy to deal with. Ships are very flammable. Yeah, I'm just worried about. Other things are down below. So I'm, I'm saying you, you're saying this as you're leaving because you don't really want to say it too loudly. No, no, I'm not saying it to anyone. I'm actually thinking in my head. Okay, this is all in my head right now. Mm -hmm. I'm not discussing this in front of the guy. Okay, 
but I am very intrigued by this dragon right now. Mm-hmm. So. And uh, he he gives you your leave, and he uh, suggests you remind uh, your father of his obligations. I have reminded my father of his obligations every day of my life. Still, he does not listen. I have no time for that conniving, idiotic moron. Yes, well, if but you... nevertheless, the powerful conniving, idiotic moron. Well, if he does um, uh, do as I ask, I will be more inclined to give you something you want in return. I have in which case, then, uh, uh, our business is concluded, and uh, good, good uh, night to you all, he says. Good evening. Oh, no. Oh, please. Did, did uh, we've gone over how many look around the, the cabin and things like that. Did I get a chance to look down the staircase into the interior of the ship at all? Uh, you see more spider webs that are thicker downstairs. <laughs> that's no indication as to how, how big or space, much space it goes into. Oh, um, the, this is a big ship. Uh, it's yep. a full warship, so there are at least two decks below you. Okay. Uh, I just said it's good to have a good gift. So, yeah. yeah. But, um, okay. Then, um, yep, okay, so we're all leaving. Uh, no one else wants to do any gaming or uh, testing of the eggs or anything like that, do they? We're ready to keep moving out. Did you mention anything about the drug selling at all, at any stage? To me? In, in with you? you no. Yeah. Uh, no, you cool. If you didn't mention it, I'm not going to ask anymore. So, I only need to mention that I had an option. So, mm-hmm. uh, okay. It's certainly something that you might talk about a bit later on when you've left. But yeah, okay. Okay. So he's got no idea what the drugs are worth anyway. So, <laughs> okay. So you you walk down the the pier. The guards um, uh, bow to you all as you uh, with with a, just a head nod as you um, pass, uh, giving you respect for not causing any trouble. <laughs> I, I nod on the way past, especially the guy I spoke to. Mm-hmm. He was normally first timers get thrown off the pier. Oh, so I took so much uh, respect to the realization that they hang on. You're mad. The silver tongue, uh, the silver tongue intimidated them into curb curbing, but yeah. Well, he, he intimidated them enough for them to take uh, you into yeah. the boss straight away. Yeah, uh, exactly. Well, um,. I was going to say, Luna shouldn't be mad. He hasn't, he hasn't lost anything. I don't know. I, I, like I, I, like I lost my child to dignity. <laughs> um, I talked to Barrack on the way out. <laughs> yep. Do you have any affinity to spiders, by the way? That's Martin's character, if Martin forgets. Oh, sorry, what? Do you have any affinity to spiders at all? Like, do you actually, do you, do you like spiders, or do you think spiders are... Well, I, I walk around with a light shield, but it's oh, spiders. Well, uh, just... I can turn into a spider, but okay. it's, they're not a totem animal or anything like so, that. So, for all, just, you know, while we're away from the guards for a little bit, I'm going, so if I maybe suggested we kind of save that dragon and get rid of the spiders, what's your thought on this? Are you saying this for all the party here? Or you I'm saying this for all the party here while we're away from the guards right now. Mm-hmm. Well, if getting rid of the spiders could you mean getting rid of uh, Devago. Well, we've got yes. what we wanted. We've got what we wanted. I have concerns for that dragon there. Why? So, could we kill. But it doesn't deserve to be free. What are you talking about? Look, this is your opinion. You, I know you've got different views on this. You also feel that most of the guard weapons will be It's a terrible creature. If you try and free it, one of my crows will eat it. But your crows eat anything, don't they? The, the crows are both They'll looking at you now. They'll especially eat it. They hate it. And I hate it. So so try and free it, I will kill it. If they're both looking at me right now... Killing, killing a bunch of spiders in order to save a dragon doesn't 
make a lot of sense to me. Okay. Well, look, here's the thing. I don't care about the dragon, but I do... I would like to destroy that ship and everything. Well, I was also saying, Bella, that this might um, benefit your father. I don't think we should destroy the ship. Look, whatever... Look, if we go a little bit too far, then so be it. But I'm just saying, oh, look, there's a benefit there. There's a benefit for Balath. There's a benefit for the dragon. There's a benefit for the, the uh, leader of the guards. I said, and we've got what we want already. It's nice to be a benefit to my father. I think it's like four stones, one... Well, four birds, one stone kind of situation. No, okay. assisting my father does not benefit anybody except for my father. Okay, so I don't know your father well enough, so I can't say this, okay? Just, just thought I'll offer. If no one wants to do it, we'll just walk, keep going, okay? I'll right, we'll just keep continuing what we're doing. Oh, that's okay. From Cornac's perspective, as soon as Bella mentioned that he desperately did not want to save the dragon, that made Cornac think, hang on, maybe we're saving the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> no, I also point, no, I still want to point out because Nick is on here. But, but in fact, Cornac was already keen to kill Devago because, hey, next time wants him dead and that's the, enough. Rashida would be happy with him dead so, and, and next obviously time. he's yeah, not a good man despite what uh, Moonamise was suggested <laughs> and but yeah. Corda does not think we go around uh, setting a fire to the whole pier and burning down all the ships um. Uh, hey, um, guys, did because there's a lot of people on there that don't necessarily deserve to die. And, and as a counterpoint to yeah, that um, statement as well, if, if you burn these ships down, you actually drive more business towards Pimwinkle. But what if we? And, and I'm and I say, didn't you guys say Pimwinkle had an issue with fire? Like, it's well known for burning things down. Was that what I heard when you guys told me about this Pimwinkle? Person, he was certainly known for his uh, activities with playing. Yes, would like maybe we could sabotage and put the blame back on him. Maybe would that work? <laughs> I don't know this town well enough, and I'm looking at Bella when I say this. Would that be an option? Well, I would still suggest that uh, you use a fire in the kitchen. Oh, look, I'm just saying we could. I said you guys told me what the history was with that Pimwinkle character, and I'm saying you guys don't like Pimwinkle character. Nexa wants to kill the person. Nexa wants to kill the spider person. I'm seeing yes. a bit of a thing here, and potentially right. maybe get some good out of it by that dragon. But I said, oh look, I'm just going to say it. Let's keep new walking. Do what we have to do. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, I would accept the idea that. Uh we could potentially burn the ship after everyone is off and we've killed the Vargo. Why oh, are you such a nerd? <laughs> well, they're engaging in vice and gambling. I'm sure that's illegal or something you're going to choose. Come on! It's so much easier if we just light the ship on fire, it kills all the spiders and probably kills him as well. Well, that's Nothing's just it. A that's just it. Probably he's not particularly advantageous, and it will likely kill a lot of others. But whilst yes, they may be engaged in illegal behaviour, they should probably be turned over to the guard rather than to the fires of hell. Well, let's let's go back yeah, to yeah, go Bella. rolls his eyes I don't want to know what excites you for. <laughs> <laughs> now, can I gauge the party's interest in my ideas based on this now, Martin? Can I... Is there any way to gauge? Because I'm just... Well, Nex is not here to put her five bobs worth... Her, his five bobs worth in right now. Do you want well, to... Well, hang on, wait. How about ignoring all of that? How about we just go and kill the... the, the kill Axie and then... Uh, then we come back and deal with these guys. We figure out how we can deal with the place. No, no, but we don't want to kill... Okay. Cresidia specifically did not want the ambassador to be killed. That's right. Oh, whatever. Boring. Now, if you want to kill somebody, we'll go deal with the ambassador and then we'll come back and finish this night off after that. Yeah. Oh, look, let's, let's, let's deal with the ambassador, do what we have to do. 
if we've got something to do afterwards, then so be. But I, mean, I, I think we need to get back to the role. I was just saying, if Nexa looks like he's having an out of body experience, it probably wouldn't enjoy it as much as if he were here and his body paying attention. Yeah. Oh, and I saw it also might cheer up Nexa, Nexa a bit because he's had gone through a lot lately Whatever. and anything that's going to uh, get the mind off things. Yeah. Whatever Nexa wants, Nexa gets. I agree. 100%. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I am I can't. The first time I've ever agreed with Bella from this character, by the way. So, <laughs> but I agree 100% with what Bella's saying right now. Happy Nexa. Happy I party. Nexa is the most beautifying thing in that prime. Yeah. 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 So, okay, let's go back. Let's do our massive thing and let's think about it. So. Okay. So, Jeremy, uh, you've currently got the letters. I've got the letters? Okay. The, well... Do any of you wish to accompany me to Lady Christina, or do you wish to return to uh, Nexus home to plan the uh, destruction of or the dispatching of Tobago? Uh, so I said I didn't want Tobago dead. What are we going to do? Sorry, what was the question there, David? We didn't want Tobago dead, but what are we going to do? No, no, no. Devago dies. Diambre uh, does not. Yeah. The Massa doesn't die, but we can, we've can. we got the okay from the guards to kill De, the Durago, the guy that we just spoke to. Okay, the, King of, the King of Spiders, I think everyone in the party is happy with him dying. Yes. The Ambassador, who is Diambre. Yeah. So, um, just as a play, what do we need to do with this ambassador? Nothing, nothing at all. We just got to give the letters. I'm going to give the letters to Virginia, and then she'll work out what she wants to do with the ambassador. Uh, we, we've done our job as far as that's concerned. Okay. Well, in that case, let's just walk in and kill him. No, okay, Come on. So, but well, I'm reading from this, but yeah. Cord is going to go back to the, the, the guardhouse to see Christina and hand over the letters. And uh, when he returns to Nexus house, there's been significant planning that says, yep, we're going in and killing Tobago. <laughs> okay. Dude. That was quick. <laughs> Just seeing if uh, if I actually have a Christina um, so Dennis is actually happy. What's going on? Okay, sorry, it's actually yeah, look, I, I think we... Um, well, I would, uh, Jeremy, I wanted to join you on the adventure to hand off the notes. But just, oh, you can if you like. Actually, yeah, I've got no problem with yeah. people coming and being... I'm just, so. I said, I'm learning like that you seem to be the person who does all the rounds. So um, <laughs> so I'm just going to join you because I feel that... I think Bear Luff has got this under control back in the house and informing Nex of what we're trying to do and keeping Nex in a good in a good mood. So um, I'll join you kind of thing on this um, walk because I'd like to visit, well, I haven't seen much of the city so far. So, Well, let's see if you actually get something nice from the um, storyline here. So let's see. Fortunately, the ambassador has his foibles. Again, Ben Carlo has learned that Ambassador and Prey has been making fairly regular visits to a place in Old Corosa. So that's how Priscilla sounds. This device is run by a dangerous man named Devargo Barbosi, better known in Corosa's alleys as the King of Spiders. I'd love to put Devargo out of business, but he pays his vice taxes regularly and never causes any problems. In fact, since he keeps his business constrained entirely within the five ships moored at Eel's End, He's actually one of the least of my worries. Truth be told, I can't decide whether DeVargo is a Sturge or a Kraken. He seems like a blood-sucking pest most days, but sometimes I fear just far his tentacles and worm their way into our great city. In this case, though, his insidious web stretching across Corvosa's underworld might be to our advantage. So, she, she does sound a bit different than I imagined, but... That is the um, official voice of Cressida. There you go. Okay. So giving you the uh, rundown after you've done it again. Yep. So yes, she she uh, thanks you greatly for uh, the letters. After reading them, uh, she does blush. Uh, as uh, you imagine, they would be quite racy. Um, I'm not yeah. Are you glad to be of service? 
Do you mind if I just have a quick look? Uh, she, she says if this is to be used for the least, least people who see it, the better. Okay, no problem. Sorry, sorry. just had to ask. But um, she says you can keep uh, any of the uh, money that she gave you beforehand and give you a, f- a further 500 gold to help um, pay expenses. Mm-hmm. Ah. So I've got 15 Oh, that's good. I wasn't, I wasn't uh, looking forward to making sure that I passed the deception check to set the And uh, is also um, uh, hand you each what they what is known as the... Drake's Mark, a uh, medal that um, symbolizes you as a champion of Corvosa. Okay. If so, you're showing this medal to someone, uh, you get a plus two to your, to your diplomacy checks. That's friggin' gross. In Corvosa or in anywhere? Corvosa only. Just Corvosa. Um, so, do you see, like, so. Only people who were there at the time. I knew people who were there at the time. Just me yeah. and Jeremy. Sarah. Yeah. Cool, I'm happy with that. I know I know that Bella would never take such a thing. So. Actually, that's not true. I was trying to go there. In which case, I'm I, assuming uh, you were there as well then. Yep, if you want to come, you can come. Yeah. Okay, well, certainly everybody okay, yeah, happy yeah. to be there if they wanted to be there. Obviously. Yeah. No, I, I just, I, I couldn't get reception into it. All good, that's right. Because obviously, Corda is quite happy to go off and do those things by himself because it means things will happen more smoothly from his perspective. But the, uh, <laughs> he certainly doesn't stop anyone coming by any stretch. Yeah. So, more than happy that everyone's there if people wanted to attend. Well, while we're there, can I, once we've done all that thing and about the health cast, is uh, is there anything else that would need help around here at the moment? Uh, not today. She recommends you rest up, uh, recover, uh, try to avoid the um, uh, Temple of Lust, um, and uh, keep your sanity because the, the city is uh, heading into uh, dark waters. Okay. Um, okay, Gordo will aim to have a private word with her... Um, before we depart, man, um, if, if the uh, if the, the actually get the cards from the party still there, that's not a problem either, really. But it'll be saying to do that. Yes, that Divago really was absolute slime, wasn't he? Are you sure the city would be is better with him? Well, um, if he's removed, uh, you'll be granting far more power to Lord Pimwinkle than he currently has. <laughs> and we don't and want come to now, Porter, you of all people should know better the devil. Because currently, um, uh, Pimwinkle has made it known that he would be happy if an accident were to happen to the uh, King of Spiders and will um, compensate someone handsomely for such efforts. So I can give my extra character to pay me money, is that what you're saying? Very much so. Ooh, the full um, uh, he, he does gift vouchers and no, um, no, credit. No, no, and no. <laughs> no, no, as soon as you said gift vouchers, I'm not interested. So. Like, he has his layaway order, service. Order to divvy up the money even. Absolutely. Okay. So how many characters have got? But can you rely on Balas getting back the thousand? Well, then, then, okay. Party. <laughs> Certainly, Cordon is happy to distribute the five hundred to the yeah. <laughs> As a player, I had no expectation of getting the thousand again. No, I had no idea. Especially, I know uh, Balat. Balat absolutely does put the thousand gold into the party loot. So you'd get three hundred gold each, guys. Oh, sweet. Especially Woo-hoo. considering the fact that technically Balath was the only one that actually scored that thousand gold initially. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll let I'll let um. Ford, I was aware that it'd be. Yeah, no, he's, he's happy. To, he's happy. Yeah, and just to no, he's happy to switch up. He really doesn't care what? about money that much. I don't want the Drake's mark because it would be part of civilization. Mm-hmm. No, no, that's fair, that's fair enough. Though. You are, you're yeah. welcome to hand it to Nexa uh, instead of keep it yourself. I, I was going to say, do you actually collect it or do you not re- do re- do, uh, reject it initially? Um, you you can take I it and then give it away, and that's still the that's still the same as not uh, uh, keeping it. All right, I'm happy to do that. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, I'll just say next to them, yeah. I'll, I'll note it down for next arc, because I've already not got noted down her for extra four gold as well, so... Yeah. yeah. Cool, I'll wrap down just in case, too. Cool bananas. Okay. Um, is there any... <laughs> this is really sounds very strange. Is there any place we can get... I'll look at Bail after I'm saying. Um... Do we have this much provisions in the actual power source, don't we? Uh, there, there are provisions there. Mm. <laughs> oh, like what kind, is it pretty bare, or is it kind it's, of... It's simple food, uh, but it's um, good food. Good food. Unlike most of the um, stuff in the city is uh, charged through the teeth, uh, most of their stuff has been sourced from uh, outside the city. I do ask Bellath on the way back, is there um, any way we can get some sort of dwarven ale in the city at all? Possibly. Here we go, drinking. All right, let's go. No, no, look, I just, I just, no, I was more about getting into it. walks off. <laughs> Cordo is saying, we'll see you back at the house. And then, and then Cordo walks off, so both of them walked off different directions. So is he going drinking or is he going drinking? I don't know where Dwarven is. So, okay, well, I'll be following him then. Okay, so you, you follow off. Uh, where does uh, our... Um, Barak and uh, Luna go as two party mi two groups have already split off from you. Um, well, is there anything that's a, like a park or like a wild area? Uh, there, there is, but that's outside the city, which yeah. you're not too far yeah. from at this stage. All right, well, I'm happy to. Uh, I'll go there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I'm not going there. Okay, so you, you walk out of the city. And where does Luna go, seeing that your party split three ways? Well, I fall. I, I go with Kodor, I guess. Okay. But as uh, Barak starts to move off in a different place, like, so Kodor said, we'll see you back at the house, expecting the others to go with him. As Barak moves off in a different direction, Kodor said, do you know where you're going? Uh, yeah, and there's a spell, I think, where I can send a message. He says, not really being 100% sure. Do, do you know how to get back to the house? <laughs> do you know how to cast that spell? <laughs> well, um, he found the house to begin with. Oh, I know, he did kind of. Like, he, he did find the house to begin with. Like, oh, no, just, I expect he does, but Paul and I was just doing the... So this is just, do you know how to get back to the house? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. I can see here the cantrip has only a. Uh, uh, Most of the time they say target, which means you need to be able to see who you're um, uh, sending it to. All right. Well, I might just go. You're going to go which way? You sort of left us hanging there with the. I might just go at that point there, Martin. I heard the, te the tempo of lust. Cordo is happy to. Tempo of lust. Cordo is happy to take you to the outskirts of the city on his way back to Nectar's house if you prefer. I believe his connection is having, connections having problems. problems. Oh. What a timing! David's going to introduce me to Dwarf Island City, so I'm going to go with this. So, which way are we heading there, uh, Martin? I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm okay. going for a night in the wilds, and then I'll return in the early morning. Yep, okay. that is fair. Cordar's happy to take you to the outskirts of the city if you're uncertain of the directions. <laughs> so, I think if I manage to find the way to. This so place. see this um, spot here on the map. That's, that's where you are. Showing up. It's not showing up for me, but that's alright. No, no, it, it just circling the cursor. Yeah, uh, okay. Citadel Bosnek, which is basically not far from High Bridge, which then leads you out onto the outside. So okay. it's not that far for you to um, leave, uh, or you can just go um, south to the um, lower part of the city, which is probably better. Yeah. Uh, and um, it, it's not that far for, for you to get away from um, civilization, from okay. from where you are. Cordon would take him to the south gate 
Yeah. You know, the idea that going to the high bridge or whatever just takes you to another urban part of the city <laughs> anyway. So. Yeah, a, a more city to go through, so you, you cut it short and take him south. Yeah. Okay, so yes, uh, you get out and uh, you, re- you then return, you, you go off drinking, and we will finish the session with uh, the groups heading off in different directions. When when Cordy says goodbye to Barack, he'll say, "Hey, do you want me to meet you back here at the gate here in the morning, or are you happy to get to the well, house?" I I think I'm I'm well. You feel um, good, Martin? Am I, am I confident I can make it to the house, or or not? Uh, yes, you 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 you've figured out how to navigate this city. I, I don't think it like gives me a headache that I can't get away from, but probably it, I, it does make me feel uncomfortable. That's right, that's cool. Right. While uncomfortable, it's, it's a city, and you you studied it for whatever you needed to learn, and that's as much as you care about it. Yeah. All good. You you mainly looked for the easiest ways to leave the city more than what was actually there. <laughs> yes, the nearest exit. Okay, so uh, I'll say uh, Merry Christmas to everyone. We will be uh, probably about four weeks from the next game, at least, uh, depending on when I can start back up again in the new year. All good. And is, is next week's game on? Uh, there are no games on next week. I have, um, I'm have i finishing up games for the year on Friday because um, I, I do need a bit of a break myself. And there's a lot of stuff going on on this end. All good. Too, too many things to chase up. Merry Christmas, everyone. Including coffee yeah. machine. So, Merry yeah. Christmas. Merry Christmas. So, 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 so. so, okay, Happy New Year, all that good stuff. Yep. And, uh, and safe so travels, all everyone. Everything you go to. <laughs> and if good anyone... Good night, everyone. Hi, guys. guys. And good day from me. Have a good morning. Either like you have a new child, it should definitely get checked out your boots. Sorry, David, what was that? Something about chewing on these boots. Yeah. Okay. okay. I, I, I will miss you all, and see you next year, man. So yeah, see yeah. you next time. Good night. Merry Christmas. Catch you next time. Good night, all. Good night. Bye. Bye. 2022.